If you're searching for a wrestling podcast that's filled with fun. This is definitely David Boy Smith's yeah, finest it's... fucking moment. He goes, he fell on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he fell on his ass. <laughs> Couple of haters. Couple of haters. Couple of haters. That's <laughs> Wrestling nostalgia. I will take you back to May 26th. 1996. It was a stormy night. <laughs> the wind was howling. <laughs> Latest pro wrestling news and rumours. We've heard about the situations between WWE, Sasha Banks and Naomi. And hilarious tangents. Oh, what the fuck Let's not tangent off. No <laughs> Samoan <and> spikes. <laughs> <Yeah. That's it. laughs> fucking tangents. <laughs> oh. Then look no further. Join your hosts, James, Stu, and Johnny, and subscribe to Top Turnbuckle Podcast. Hello, and welcome to episode 12 of Top Turnbuckle Podcast with myself, Stu. I'm Johnny. And I'm James. And we're going for something different on this one, seeing as it's Christmas. We're feeling all nostalgic, fuzzy, tinsely, sparkly baubles and warm inside. Yes, indeed we are. We will be shooting the shit about all good things from the past, the now and the future. Ooh. Well, then now and forever is uh, really the key to this, isn't it? Yeah. Indeed it Yesterday, is. today and tomorrow. Yep. And... Just like Billy and Bart the Smoking Guns shooting their handguns into the crowd, or Brian Pillman pulling out his pistol and looking to shoot down Stone Cold Steve Austin. I was wondering where that was going. <laughs> or even Kurt Angle shooting a tranquilizer dart at the big show on an episode of SmackDown. I, I remember forgot that. about that. Did you forget yeah. that one? That was um, episode 1000 or something, maybe? Bloody oh, hell. Yes. That. Christ. They put me in a net as well, I think, after. Yeah, we're less yes. than two minutes in and we've gone on a tangent <laughs> we already. Have That's got to be a record. <laughs> yes. yes. So basically for this episode, we are we're just going to be talking about wrestling. We've not got any topics. No, no. It's, it, it's going to be one where we are just going to uh, just go ab lib. Yeah. And it's Christmas! <laughs> Also, a quick thank you to anyone who's just watched our little Secret Santa video. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm staying as far away from comments about this one as physically possible because there was a bit of a dodgy topic that went on there. But it was all good fun. And thanks, both of you, for your gifts. And thank you. Yeah, yes. thank you, mate. And also thanks for the special gift at the end there, Johnny, with the top turnbuckle t-shirt. Oh, don't yeah, thank me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Johnny Reggae. Johnny Reggae. Yes. Thank you, Johnny Reggae. It only comes at Christmas. Comes out at Christmas. Well, I'm glad you decided to change <laughs> yes, that before I, I was about to pipe up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's yes. your festive double entendre. The step aside Santa, <laughs> TTP is coming to town. And in the words of Sir Elton John, let's step into Christmas with you. Ooh. He's thought about this. Well, I have thought about it. There's many That's more That's what to he come. was doing earlier. Really? You know, when we were talking, he was writing notes. <laughs> <fucking> notes. <laughs> oh, there's many more. Many, many more. So, yeah, we're just going to be, well, talking bollocks for this episode. Well, we're all the same age, aren't we? I mean, we, I don't mind giving away my age. I mean, I'm 40. I'm 40. Yeah. I'm 26. What are you on about? Okay. No. I'm 26 year old. I'm the old one. I'm the 41 year old. Yeah. Ooh, should be in bed with a cup of cocoa. <laughs> but we all come from a random town. Fucking hell, Johnny. <laughs> all right. We, we all come from a random town. I'll be fucking present back. <laughs> we all come from around about the same era of wrestling. So when we get into wrestling, it's yeah. around about the early 90s, late 80s, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 So. What were everyone's thoughts? What were the first things that they remember as a child? Who wants to go first? I'll let you guys go first. Shall I go first? I'm, I'm genuinely yeah. struggling to remember a bit here. I, the first time I really remember wrestling was about, I'd say, 1991. It must have been like early 91. Um, I remember... Try and think back. I remember my cousin and my uncle went to the UK Rampage 91 
which mm. was headlined by Hogan and Sergeant Slaughter. And they brought me back a poster of Hulk whoa, Hogan. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Thunderlips. Thunderlips. Let's get it right. The suburban Commando. Fuck the Suburban Commando. You may say. <laughs> And if you watched earlier, Stu's got a lovely poster. Lovely. It's got on his wall. It's a proper old school poster. It's actually one of the old ones. Like from a rental company. It is, yeah. yeah. Probably worth a bit of money nowadays. Sell it on the black market. <laughs> See, well, that Suburban Commando shit, that, that, that actually costs like quite a lot of money. Yeah. Classic. Absolute classic. We get off the fucking Suburban Commando <laughs> shit already. It's Christmas! Oh, oh God. Oh. We're saying that's got to be on, isn't it, Johnny? Surely. Oh, it has to be on between yeah, I mean, Christmas there and There is New no Year. channel alive that is going to risk their, you know... We need to I think, they might do, I, I think they might do what the World Cup did and put it both, on both channels. Yes. It's that important, like BBC One and ITV. Uh, but on all the channels, same time, 24 yeah. hours a day. Yeah. What, what was that hashtag you put on the back of my T-shirt? Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Last mention of it, sorry. Yeah, so, <laughs> right, um, so yeah, it was um, 91. Um, I remember there was a guy on our Facebook group who you actually know, Stu, um, Charlie... Simpson? Is it Charlie Simpson? Miller. Charlie Miller? Charlie, Charlie Sim- Miller. Charlie, Charlie Simpson. Simpson. Charlie Simpson. <laughs> That's from Busted and Fight yes. Stars. And there used to be an old guy who lived up the road from me called Charlie Simpson as well. Did a real good Scottish accent, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Miller, yes. Um, he used to lend my dad a lot of old VHS video so, tapes. Yeah, so um, my stepdad. So yeah. They were probably the same tapes we probably bought. Yeah, from yeah. Other. Thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, I remember he. I was watching like... UK Rampage 89, which was in the, um, the Docklands Arena or something, and like TV shows. I watched of- Slipknot then. Did you? Slipknot, Corn as well. Is that yeah. still going? I don't, I don't know if it's still available. I don't, I don't know if it's still open now. But- I don't think it is. I'm not sure though. Mm. Linkin, Park, uh, Linkin Park's first um, UK tour as well. Oh, very nice. Yeah, that was good. So yeah, I bought a load of tapes. Um, that's when I really re- kind of remember the very first. Mm time I kind of heard about it and then it was kind of from that point onwards just sort of took off really yeah 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 same here yeah I, I can think yeah same person um Charlie Miller for that you know the, the first pay-per-view I can really remember was the Summer Slam, yeah Summer Slam Wembley Arena Wembley Stadium oh 92 yeah yeah sure. that was that was the first WWF pay-per-view I ever watched yeah and like I don't get me wrong like I wasn't completely clued up on all these wrestlers that were on there but at that time and that age I knew who Bret Hart was I knew who the British Bulldog was and you know Legion of Doom you knew these big ones and don't get me wrong like you know, I've seen Hulk Hogan like wrestle for when James used to record it on Sky Sports <laughs> we used to go and it was at weekdays or after school or you know at the weekends but that pay-per-view has got a proper nostalgic feel for me because that that is actually the first pay-per-view I ever got to watch yeah and you know and I and I do remember sitting there one Sunday afternoon um because my stepdad was very very good friends with Charlie they used to drink together he told him he gave him the my tape. dad probably knew there is a good did. possibility yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Did he ever drink down the Northcroft? All the time. Yeah, well, he definitely oh, knows. All my, the time. Mate, trust me. <laughs> there is a very, very high chance he knows my stepdad. But, um, yeah, so, it, yeah, I've got, you know, much like yourself, Johnny, I've got to thank Charlie for that, you know. Yeah. And then, um, don't get me wrong, it's not the greatest pay-per-view in the world ever, but that Hitman versus the Bulldog, that's a, you know, that's a proper, you know, historic moment to do a professional wrestling. Yeah, and I also think it's probably rated as one of the still best matches of all time, isn't it? It is yeah. good, yeah. Even though yeah. Brett had to carry Bulldog because he was absolutely <laughs> off his tits. He'd been out the night before, hadn't he? Um, uh, it was something to do with drugs. He coke, was coked up. Unfortunately. Mm, and allegedly. Allegedly, when yeah. I don't think it was in the match. I think he was okay for the match, but what happened was he couldn't remember anything. That's yeah. it, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, but what a match! You know, like I said, you know, it's not the it's not the greatest pay per view ever, but that match itself, that's that's a historic moment for not just WWE or WWF, what you want to call them at the time, but in professional wrestling wrestling history. Yeah, for, the, for especially for us, mm. UK. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. 
Yeah. But I've got to say, and I, I think I have mentioned this before, um, obviously where, you know, we used to tape WCW at like stupid o'clock. It was on know. a Thursday evening, wasn't it? Like one, two o'clock so, in the morning. Yeah. And I always thought as well, because they moved it to a Saturday afternoon, didn't they? Yeah. Which is a really, really good like kind of time, especially for like wrestling, but WCW as well. Yeah. I, I don't think it ever did very well. No, no. It was on about five o'clock. After like Baywatch and the A Team or something like that. Yeah. Airwolf. <laughs> Street Hawk. <laughs> Fucking hell, showing me age now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think I touched on it previously. Where um, like the first ever match of like you know watching a house show, um, and it is always that one that stuck in my mind and still does now because I still watch it every so often because it has got a proper nostalgic feel to me. It takes me back to my childhood, and it was watching a, an episode of WCW. And the last, I'm pretty sure it was the last match on the card, was Cactus Jack versus Vader. Mm-hmm. And um, daring straight away, that was my love of Mick Foley. Yeah. It captured me straight away because you've got all these big guys in there. Like Vader was... Big sweaty man. Fucking him, enormous. And then out comes this guy in like a wanted shirt, <laughs> wanted T-shirt. And I'm, I say that as in not as in the shitty British pop band. Um, I think about that for a, a flat, uh, yeah, a, fl- a cut off flannel shirt, black pair of tights, and leopard print boots. And you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> but there was, I don't know. It just felt like there was something relatable. I was like, yeah, you know, because I, I have been a big kid since way back, you know, not, you know. But you do, you look at people yeah. like that, and you kind of go, oh fuck me, yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be, you know, the most muscle-bound guy to make an impact. And, yeah, and, and again, like I touched on episode one, this why he's one of my favourite wrestlers of all time. That that stuck with me, and that has always stuck with me. Yeah, so, yeah, no, thanks, Mick. I don't remember my first match I ever saw. Um, I remember it was about February 92. I remember going upstairs, and my parents took me up there, I walked in the bedroom and there was a sky dish and the sky box. And like, I don't think many people at that time really had sky. No, no, they didn't. And no, it was a massive luxury. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And I was like, I started learning about wrestling at that time. Cause I remember, I remember getting my first wrestling magazine and it was like September 91. And I'd been to Felix though. I mm. think I had for the day out at the seaside and they had a copy of, it was like Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior on the front, like in this war kind of clothing. Yeah. And it was like the review of SummerSlam 91 and everything like that. I remember that magazine. Yeah. I, I still got that, it now. I had one. I think it was the only one I ever was bought. And I can't remember which member of my family bought me it, but it had Jake the Snake on the front. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The most popular one that everyone seems to remember, there's two especially in this country, and it's the one with Sid Justice on the front. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's the one with Elizabeth on the front. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you remember the yeah. one with Elizabeth on yeah. the front? Yeah. That's right, yeah. I remember. Because I think that the, that was the first one I started subscribing to the magazine, was yeah. that issue. All right. I do remember that. But, yeah, I just remember, like, yeah, it was the Sky Dish. The first pay-per-view I saw was WrestleMania 8. And back then, you, did, you had one sports channel. Yeah. And... You had like the, your pay per views were on the movie channel, which That's was like right. box office, and you only had yep. two movie channels. And um, you had like TV shows, which were like your prime time and your All American Wrestling and Wrestling Challenge were on Eurosport. Mm-hmm. But we didn't have to pay. No, then, did right. we? No, we never no. had to pay. Like in America, they were still paying like right. yeah. pay per view rates. But here, luckily for us. We didn't have to pay. Yeah, it was Sky, actually just on. Sky, yeah, yeah. Sky had a great little setup at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not for them. For us. Well, <laughs> yeah. For us. Oh, believe me, I'm pretty sure they cashed in with a lot of stuff after that when they realised how much <laughs> money they could make. You Robin bastards. <laughs> so mine, mine's the same. Mine's about the same era. Mine's about mm. 90, probably a little bit earlier, uh, beside a couple of older friends. And... The, the first time I remember, I hadn't even seen wrestling. I remember a friend getting those Merlin cards. I 
don't know if anyone yeah. remembers them. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. used to get pictures of the wrestlers and it would have like a bio on the back. Yeah, it had like little factoids on the back, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. and I remember seeing them and just being mesmerised by them. I was like, this is so cool. Does this actually exist? They look exist? good, man, to be fair. For yeah, it's for the goal. Have as you? Well. Yeah. Holy I've, shit. All, I, I think that, I've collected everything. I've never thrown anything away. I literally have all of it. Johnny the Hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> so you what, though? That pays off because Jesus Christ, is that stuff worth a lot? Sure, now? saying that, right? And I don't know it's going off a bit of a tangent. I do apologise for this. Right. So, have we all watched The Mandalorian? No, no, I right. haven't. But you know of it. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. So obviously you've got the ex UFC fighter. So it does tie in with this sort of thing somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, ex- Sasha Banks is in The Mandalorian as well, isn't <laughs> she? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, she, she is. is. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's not about her. Get over yourself. Um, Gina Carano. Obviously, she was fired for, you know... I remember that. Reasons, whatever. Nothing to do with me. I'm not going into that. Don't care. Um, So, you obviously get all the figures and things like that that were in production. Now, companies like Hasbro and Funko Pop ceased making the character Cara Dune. Okay. Right. I had one on pre-order, and then they stopped. Right. So I got my money back for it. Absolutely brilliant. So two weeks ago, I managed to get one on eBay. Mint condition, still in its box. Absolutely perfect. Now, there was loads of them going on on eBay for like 60-odd quid, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. I paid four quid. (laughs) Now, the return on that alone is going to be massive. Yeah, it will, because it's a discontinued figure. Reminds me of something going off on another tangent. I bought a um, Ghostbusters Proton pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was the toy one from like the 80s. Oh, the blue one. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember that. Bought it. Yeah, I remember that. I bought it for car boot sale for 50p. Still in the box, still in their bags, Holy instructions, shit. everything. I, I wish I had kept it, but I did sell it for £160 on eBay. <sighs> well, you still That's, made a fucking yeah, man. Yeah, off it, yeah. Mate. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, well, it's, it's, <laughs> yes, that's, still that's, on me, isn't it? That's enough of our, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's Christmas. It's Cash In Podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. going back after the uh, Merlin cards, I think that's what it was. I think it was it Merlin was, yeah, cards. Yeah. There yeah. was like black ones and there was yellow ones. Like I remember gold. being in a blue Yeah, there was pack. blue ones before, yeah. Like yeah. the pack that you owned. Tops to them. Yeah, top I think stra- it was yeah. tops. Top Australian. Yeah, so going back off of those cards... I remember seeing wrestling the first time and you know when you have like a card or something and you see whatever it is the card was and it was yeah, like yeah. disappointing. To me it wasn't. It was like this was much better and more than yeah. I thought it was going to be and I yeah. think that's where like I still have my excitement mm. for wrestling. I was like this is awesome. The first one I know I saw 100% was around about when they were doing Superstars and it was the Gravest Challenge. Oh, about 91, they were, they, yeah, yeah, they were setting up. It was just after SummerSlam. They were setting up The Undertaker and Hogan. Yeah. And oh. it come across very sinister because you had The Undertaker putting people in body bags and things in. like that. Yeah. Survivor, <laughs> Survivor Series 91 was the first pay-per-view I watched mm. because I had a friend, again, similar to you guys, who take... And I actually really, really love that era. Maybe because I'm... A, because of the nostalgia, but also that was a pretty good era. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. because you had coming up Ric Flair, uh, the Royal Rumble 92 and all yeah. of that, and it was a quite exciting era. Yeah, it was, yeah. And you mm-hmm. had Tuesday in Texas. That's Tuesday right. in Texas is such an underrated pay-per-view. That's with the rematch of Antigua Hogan and it's Jake Randy Savage. The Jake Randy Savage match in that is dark as fuck. Does anyone remember that match? What oh. happens? Doesn't he slap Elizabeth? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he... Oh, no, wait. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, I have yeah. seen that. Yeah. Yeah, we have talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's... watching it back, it's captivating because right. Jake is so evil in that fucking match. Yeah. But he's done it so well. I yeah. always like that, Jake Roberts, that star. That was the best Jake Roberts. Was that, was that the era? Was it... it, it 
So he did something really dark with the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, yeah just before. The... That was the face, uh, sorry, the heel turn of Jake, I believe. And he put him in the room of all the snakes and yeah. stuff. Yeah, bur- bury, li- bury him alive to be reborn or something like that, wasn't it? Something strange, wasn't it? No, he put him in a room with snakes because he kept, Warrior kept saying, Snake Man, I need to learn the dark arts to mm. be able to beat. I reckon it was Undertaker. Because they were planning on having Warrior Jay Roberts as a feud. Yeah, they were. Right. on for that, but because Warrior got, I think he left, didn't he, shortly after? Um, it never happened. Mm-hmm. There was really a lot really of feuds with Jake that didn't happen. One of the feuds was supposed to be over the Intercontinental title with Bret Hart. That would have been interesting. Yeah, that would have been mm. quite good as well. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, that was mine. And I remember... Nice. I remember, like, the excitement of that Royal Rumble. And that Royal Rumble is still exciting because the title's on the line. That's mm. it, yeah. yeah in, that, in that Rumble. And I'm Flair went sure all the way. I watched that. You did. Round yours, didn't you I? You did. Yeah. Because I, had, yeah. I, I was so into it at that point, I had actually kind of manipulated. I had got two people to tape it for me mm. just in case one of them failed. Yeah, that yeah. is how I think I, I've done that before yeah, as well. That is yeah. how much I wanted it taped for me. I asked two people, <laughs> so I got two copies brought to me. Dedication, man. Yeah. Fair play. <laughs> I still remember the first VHS videotape going back a few years. Um I, I got I bought it got it for I think it must have been Christmas ninety two. I, I got the Battle Royal at the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. And it was the one with the Battle Royal and the Bulldog one. And I think there's an Undertaker, Hacksaw Jim Duggan match on there as well. I'm going to test my knowledge. I think it's the Texas Tornado. I might Who be did I wrong. say? Hacksaw. Yes, yeah. I think, I it think is, yeah. that the Battle of the Royal Albert Hall is Tornado. And I've, the reason I remember yeah. this is because Kerry Von Erich didn't want to go into a uh, body bag. He wasn't happy about it. Okay. He throws it out into the crowd. That's, what That's how they right. got out of in Texas Tornado right, in it because right. he wasn't comfortable with going in one yeah, I don't know enough. if it was for religious reasons Might or whatever Maybe claustrophobia yeah, yeah. Or maybe uh, his brothers and stuff yeah at the uh, time as well yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah I remember getting that and I think there's a great match on there with Flair and Tio Santana yeah there is yeah but that was the first VHS I got and I remember that Christmas as well I got the Jake the Snake Roberts and Superfly Jimmy Snooker figures they were the first two figures I received Mm. Yeah, from there I just I collected all of them. The first VHS I got, um, ironically, is the one uh, what you were talking well, not sorry, VHS you were talking about, but pay per view you just spoke about, which is that Royal Rumble 91. 92. 92, yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the first VHS I ever got. First figure I ever got, I'm pretty sure, was the Ultimate Warrior with the white trunks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember which figure I first got. I know I had loads, and I know yeah, that I, I, was quite, loads. I was quite sinister with them because I was into Warhammer, and I used to paint blood on them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Holy shit! It actually, looked pretty good. <laughs> it did, to be fair. Yeah. I think I had two sets of Demolition, and I always remember one of the Smash figures. Painted white with tip X over the black lines and used him as a diesel, like Kevin Nash. <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting thing with, from my point of view and nostalgia is once I got into it, I wanted to know what happened before. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. started asking every person because I knew that there was, I think it was someone to my mum and she was an older lady and she was actually a fan. All right. Okay. And she had like, all of them going back to like WrestleMania 5. Jesus. And it was like unbelievable for me because I could go back and watch yeah, all yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. And I could see why someone had the title now yeah. and why this person ended up fusing with this person yeah. and all that. That was like our, our WWE network. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty. Oh, shit. Well, speaking of nostalgia, and it has been nice to do this nostalgia, we've actually... We reached out on um, social media, especially more specifically on our Facebook page, and we just asked our listeners out there to um, well, give us give us some nostalgic stories about wrestling. And um, first one I'm going to shout out is Rob Holmes, who unfortunately started his uh, 
festive season by stating, well, I tested positive for COVID this morning. Oh, get well so, soon. Get well uh, soon. Yeah, too right. Get well soon, Rob. And also get well to your other half Donna as well, who was also sadly um, just tested positive for COVID. Um, and as he says, though, that's a lovely early Christmas present. Um, I really got into wrestling in the late 90s when Raw and SmackDown were being shown on Sky One right at the start of the Attitude Era. Intentionally or not, but WWF or WWE had a sense of humour about itself at that time, especially The Rock. I always felt like I had a bit of like it, like he had a bit of tongue in cheek about the act, which I really like. Later, when Impact and AEW started pulling out old names like Sting and Chris Jericho, there's there's the pull factor. And with AEW being on IT4, it's really convenient and easy for me to watch. It's always amazing hearing other people like when they got into it. Like yeah. with Rob, obviously, he got into it like the Attitude Era. Yeah. And it's, it's just so yeah. strange where we were kind of like in a lot before that. It's always nice to hear when people started first watching. Yeah. I think it's lovely to hear that from his point of view because yeah. he missed out on 1995. And I think that's wonderful that you fucking missed out on that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have the WWE Network, Rod, dodge that like the plague. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is great. It is, it is, you know. It'd be nice to know if he actually went back and watched some of the older stuff as well. Or he's only kind of just carried on from that point. Yeah. Well, no, Rob does listen because he, he he keeps in contact a lot with us on the on our, on you know our social media, he and does. he thoroughly enjoyed the suburban commando shite from the last episode. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Merry Christmas to you, Rob, Donna, and the family. Hope you get rid of this awful illness soon, and take care of yourselves. Merry Christmas. Another comment that we've got is Chris Francis. Hello, Chris. Merry Christmas to you as well, mate. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, mate. He says, one of the best eras, even if underutilised, was the Invasion storyline and how that changed the business. Also, the night after Survivor Series and Ric Flair coming back as owner changed so much and paved way for NWA to come in. Uh, Triple H's return at Madison Square Gardens and Eddie Guerrero beating Brock Lesnar are great memories. Maybe one day a decent hardcore division to return, hopefully. Yeah, that's fantastic, mate. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, it's, it's lovely to hear when people actually did get into it. Yeah. And then straight, straight underneath it as well was a comment from our good friend Rob Shepard. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, Rob. Merry Christmas. Um, as, as replied back to Chris saying, Chris Francis, love that Eddie versus Brock match. I'd taken a break from watching wrestling and that pulled me right back in. Good stuff, have it? No. We have another comment from our good friend Rob Shepherd. Um, I've got great memories of watching wrestling while I was at school. Must have been around 1990, and whoever's dad could afford Sky, <laughs> yeah. brackets, think, maybe I, two people in the whole school. <laughs> I, I think this is a common thing yes, in absolutely. our era. Uh, used to take the pay-per-views, and that VHS would be passed around. That week, we'd all wrestle on the school field every lunchtime <laughs> and copy what we'd seen. Uniforms got ruined, people got hurt, and I and it got banned before long. <laughs> I'd like to say I was the final ever champ, but I got pinned by Chris Hodges in what was a huge upset, and I never got that rematch. Well, well, <laughs> well, didn't things take a funny turn last night, Rob? <laughs> um, it would seem that um, that Chris has made his return, and. Um, Coming to look yeah. for you. He he wants that rematch, as Rob was very kindly messaging me. Oh, God. We need that rematch to happen. <laughs> so, and I have offered our services, uh, as has Johnny. Johnny has... I'll be the ring announcer. Johnny has uh, taken the ring announcer. I said I will be the ref, uh, which unfortunately, I can, I can James... I the bell. Oh, I, well, <laughs> I, I sent out that you were going to be the commentator. I can do. That's fine. Brilliant. Um, so... Rob is looking for that rematch and uh, let us know if it happens and we'll be there. And film it. And yes, it. yes, we will film it. We will film it. Um, yeah, thanks thanks for those comments. It's, yeah, it's really nice. And uh, yeah, thanks to everyone that, you know, got involved in that conversation. It was, Definitely. It's really nice to actually, you know, get a chance to do these questions and, yeah. you know. Yeah, I've absolutely. Got yeah. When did you guys hear about other promotions outside of the WWF and WCW? I think for me, it would have been probably around about 95, 
I think Eurosport started to show mm. uh, Japan. They did. They showed. Uh, was it Bushido? Yeah. I think, and it was a. I don't know if it was his own promotion. I remember Bob Backlund was on there. Yeah. And it was a load of Japanese. Yeah, me as and well. uh, me and another person. I hate to say this because I forget your name. We were talking about that. It was seen as quite a serious. It, it was. It was done like quite seriously, as if it was real, yeah. but it wasn't. Yeah, if you yeah. know what I mean, it was. It was actually done like it was proper real. Mm. There was no glitz, no glamour, okay. no entrance music. It was That's done it, like just fighting in the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I think it was. Um, I, I'd say it was about ninety three. I think I first started hearing about different promotions. I was subscribing to Pro Wrestling Illustrated, mm. and I was getting the Wrestler magazine and Inside Wrestling as well, and they were showing all these blood matches from like Japan. Um, there was Smoky Mountain Wrestling was in there. USWA. Yeah, actually, yeah I, I'd, I'd have to change now. <laughs> Smoky Mountain, I know about. So, yeah. I, do you know what? At least this is going to sound bad. <clears throat> I didn't really realise about Smoky Mountain Wrestling until I bought Mick Foley's uh, Greatest Hits and Misses. Yeah, Smoky Mountain was uh, it, it was kind of publicised on WWF, so it was an easy way of saying Not that you would have been able to see it, mm. But you certainly knew about it because you knew that's where Jim Cornette come from. Yeah. So you would have immediately known there was other things out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, Shortly after, I think it was ECW, I started hearing about and getting into, that was, I'd say, 95. Mm, I started getting the you're tapes. You a lot earlier than me. And I, was, I, was ta- I started tape trading, I'd say, 96. And that's when I was getting... ECW all the time coming in. Yeah, I was so excited around then. Yeah. So I, I've yeah my first one outside of WCW and WWF at the time um, was just flicking around TV. I, one of my relatives had Sky, and I stumbled across ECW by sheer mistake uh, and and just good luck really. Um, I think they used to show that on Bravo. I'm pretty sure that was it. It was on a Saturday night, but only for half an hour. Yeah. Mm. But it was old stuff that they would show on TV and stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure the first match that I saw on there was Tommy Dreamer. Um, Anyway, yeah, I know it was a Tommy Dreamer match, and it was pretty brutal. And just kind of sat there and like, and I won't lie, my first thoughts were, what the fuck is this? Mm. (laughs) Like, What? Fuck me, they're deliberately going out to hurt each other. What, what the fuck? Well, I had a, I had a year out of wrestling in 95. For good reason, I believe. <laughs> uh, what, I, I, I don't because, know what you mean. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I started to feel like it, it, it had become like a thing where I'd outgrown it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I remember getting straight back in a year later mm. and seeing like... I remember going into Woolworths and seeing all this Steve Austin stuff and things starting to change. And I was like, actually, I quite like this again now. But I remember taking a year out of it in 95. Yeah. And that must have impacted WWF because I've heard that from a lot of people. Like a lot of people around 95 had just had enough. Yeah, I don't, I probably should have had that year off, to be honest, but I don't think I ever had a break. I also remember around this time, it was probably earlier as well, I was watching AAA, Uh Mexican stuff as well. And um, I had a friend, Dan Reed, who's on the page as well. Yeah. And we were trading a lot and we were watching, we were hanging out all the time and we were trying to wrestle AAA style matches in his garden. (laughs) Yeah. It was was hard work. I bet it was. Yeah. But then, yeah, like, like you said, 95 was a bad year for wrestling. Mm. And 95 was the year that Sky in the UK finally got raw on a Thursday night. Yeah. Right, right. And things started to change a little bit going forward then. So I still remember the first raw. It was um, Razor versus the 1-2-3 one, two, one, two, kid. kid. It was their, final, their, their rematch mm. from years before. The first raw on the UK. Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah. I think Dean Douglas interfered in it, Shane Douglas. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because Nitro wasn't being shown 
at this point either. Ooh, it was. Was it this time? Yeah, it was being shown on German TV. That's what, yeah, that's what I was just about to get to. DSF, Channel yep. 21. Yes, they would show all the pay-per-views, all the shows, Saturday night, yep. WCW Pro, good. Worldwide, everything. Yeah, it, Quite a good time. They used to show WWF as well. If they you could did. put up yeah. with, uh, if you could put up with the Germans, like you know, the German commentary. Yeah. It, you used to, if, if so, if like your mum and dad said, "Oh, we can't afford Sky Sports or something like that," you used to be able to watch it in foreign, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. in German, on there, the other channels. There was another German channel as well. I think it was called RTL One. Yes. And they used to show WWF as well. But I liked it because they played the theme tunes longer without speaking over the top. <laughs> so I used to sit there and I used to record it. It might have it. been that one. It might have been. <laughs> was RTL German or French? I, f- uh, think, that I think it was French. I don't yeah, I know. I remember. But one of them, I, I know that I watched some Sam 94 on. I know mm. it is. I still remember watching one of the WCW pay-per-views. I think it was World War III, 1995. Um, and I was watching it on the, the German DSF channel. I remember halfway through, there was an English voice come on saying, we know you're watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our magazine. And, all this <laughs> other stuff. Really? and for years, I've, I felt like that's a dream. And I'm not sure if it's real, but I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure that happened. It's pretty obvious that people would because <laughs> yeah. it was so open. Yeah. All you had to do is flick through those channels. Yeah. And you will find it. You <laughs> I remember the first WCW pay-per-view I watched on DSF. It was Halloween Havoc 94. And it was Johnny B. Bad versus um, the Honky Tonk Man in the opening match. I think the main event was Hulk Hogan versus The Butcher. No, that was the Starcade one. Right. Brutus Beefcake. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to remember that time for me because I was doing, I was starting to get into other stuff. Yeah. Like that 1995 small periods where I had out I started to get into other hobbies mm. and it wasn't as big a hobby for me and then the yeah, attitude so era went I should have got in more hobbies really I was just <laughs> <into> wrestling <laughs> all the way see I 95 uh, was hard it was hard even if was, you were a die hard fan to actually still mm. I think that's why we're interested for watching ECW and other stuff as yeah. well see mate it's me dipping out of wrestling it, 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 well as you know James, sorry. <laughs> I can say you know, and obviously everyone else is listening to this going, who the fuck is he on about? <laughs> um, yeah, as James knows, I dipped out of wrestling for quite some amount of time. Um, it wasn't like a couple of years. I think it was about five, mm. five, possibly six years. So I think I I had missed out on the 95 era right up until possibly 99, 2000. Um, but... I can thank, and he's one of our listeners, uh, Chris Blackmore. BGC. We used to work, yeah, we work, we've worked together in a couple of jobs and um, at different, you know, at different times or another. And uh, when I first, when I first met Chris, we, you know, he uh, invited me round, uh, went round one Saturday afternoon, had a few drinks and, um, and bless his wonderful mum, Sandy, brought round uh, a video and it was, it was raw. I was like, we sat watching this, and I was like, holy shit, I haven't watched this in years. And I'll be honest, there was a couple of people I kind of recognised on it, and, um, and you know, and it was, this was around about the era of, you know, coming up, coming to the ends, you know, of the last few years of the Attitude Era, and seeing Stone Cold, and we're like, fuck, I'm I'm sure, like saying to Chris, I'm sure, didn't he used to be stunning, Steve Austin? He was like, yeah, wrestled with Brian Pillman. I was like, holy shit. And then obviously, you know, he, he told us about Brian Pillman. and I was like, oh, fuck, I didn't, you know, I didn't realise he'd gone. And then, you know, and it progressed and, and I started getting more and more interested in it again. Yeah. And it would then become a weekly thing. We, you know, he, his, his parents would record Raw and Smackdown. We'd go around, to, I'd go around to Chris's and another friend of mine, Lee Coles. We'd go around there, we'd watch Raw and Smackdown. And then like my grandparents had Sky. And at the time, I was living with my grandparents and, you know, kind of stay up late at stupid o'clock in the morning, watch these pay-per-views, knowing full well I had to be out for work at six o'clock the <laughs> next morning. And, yeah, it, it pulled me back in. It that really might, that, did. That used to cost me a fortune. 
when I was younger, like working part time, like fifteen. I think they were fifteen pounds. Yeah, about that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, they weren't <clears throat> fucking cheap. But yeah, so yeah, thanks, Chris, your mum, as well, Sandy. Th- yeah, thank. Yeah, you. You know, if it hadn't been for you guys, you wouldn't have pulled me back in, and then obviously getting back in touch with James. And started talking about wrestling again and then started sending me videos of a guy who I'd never heard of at the time called Kenny Omega. <laughs> and you know, and then you and then from there on I started watching, you know, New Japan. Well I remember clips on YouTube. I remember going back, I remember you coming you 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 had gone away. Yeah, yeah, you, I moved away. And, and yeah. I was tape trading at the time and I'm oh, sure you remember yeah. that my my room was a whole wall yeah. of videos. Yeah. And I give that you mad. about four or five yeah. pay-per-views, just gave them to you. And it was around about the time when it was really, I don't know if you remember this, Johnny, but when the WWF first changed to WWE, yeah. if you were selling, oh my God, you were quits in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone were, went crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like things like WrestleMania 13, which was quite a rare one mm. in the UK. You could sell it for thirty quid online. Yeah, people before were the tags classics mm-hmm. yeah, come out. Before they changed it all, yeah. Uh, because they, in in everyone's minds, they'd all been deleted. Yeah. So anyone who had them, they were all scampering to get them off yeah, of them. Yeah, people wanted them. Yeah. And I was selling them for fun. I yeah. was, I was <laughs> absolutely. I, I was buying like, going into certain shops like video shops, and I'd see like. Three copies of WrestleMania Eight, and I buy all of them and stick them straight <laughs> on Amazon, <laughs> like, and and or eBay, and people were buying them for like twenty pounds yeah. each. Yeah, the money was unreal. In like, amazing commodity now, isn't it? Stuff like that. Well, it's it's not as much now. It was it was when they got rid of the WWF and changed it to WWE. Mm. Everything with WWF was deleted. Yeah, okay, uh, so, became sought after. Yes, yeah, so you couldn't get it. Yeah. And I think there was like a year or a two year period where they come out on DVD yeah, as tags classics. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. And in that period, people didn't know what was going to happen and they were going crazy for the tapes. Mm. They yeah. were, if you went online, the tapes were going for a fortune. But I'm talking like the old school ones. Yeah, yeah. Like WrestleMania 2 would be going for like £25. I think some yeah. of them still do sell quite well. Like, I've still got all of my tapes. I never got rid of any of them. Oh, shit. And um, it's a nightmare. When I move house, every time, I have to take everything with me. <laughs> it's such hard work. So if anyone out there in listener land is sitting on tapes, <laughs> eBay. <laughs> I don't know where they're going now. I know that the uh, I, I know, know that the market went down on it because I come out of it and stopped doing it. Yeah, I'm not sure nowadays. Um, I know there's certain ones you can... That are still worth some Seasons money, Beatings is worth a lot. It's a yeah. very uh, it's a very sought after tape and there's not many of them that were made here. If you've got that, that's was worth that a lot of money. Was that the House 5 one? No. no. Well, we had this conversation before, I think. Um, no, it was just a compilation, I believe. Oh, okay. It was a special yeah, I was gonna video. going to say, that recently been put on the network? I'm What's sure that? I've seen Season Beatings on... No, I think that they've got a special that they've called. Ah, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But it's not the original right. Seasons Beatings VHS. I think okay. I remember the one you're talking about, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I think you got it somehow, like for a magazine order. Yeah, I think. Or a I subscription. Thought... And uh, people in America, yeah. any collector wanted it massive. I they got it somewhere. Yeah. Like it's worth a fortune. Okay. It's, uh, it probably still is. If you go on eBay, I bet there's like two of them. I'll have um, to have a long yeah. to go for my loft tomorrow, see if I can find it. And speaking of America, just a very, very quick shout out to all of our listeners over in the States. We seem to be doing incredibly well yeah. out there in the States. Um, yeah, we do. Oh, beautiful. You can do it, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Come but on. yeah, we, yeah, because we do, we do look at our stats and... Um, yeah, it's not taking anything away from anyone else around no. the world that uh, that listens to us. But, um, yeah, we seem to be doing really well in um, the good old US of A. So, yes, yeah, thanks thank a lot you. for that. Cheers. Yes. Yeah, and if the, if the UK would like to uh, Pull rival, their heads out of their asses yeah, and, and if they get... would like to rival <laughs> and get a shout-out from us, yep. 
So yeah. put putting it this way, we've actually got one person in Ghana that's listening to us. Yeah. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's awesome. As we said before, we were massive in the Philippines for one. We were, we? yeah. We were doing really well yeah, in the all Philippines. Of you get involved. Yeah. Don't be like mud. Yeah. Be lonely this Christmas. Oh, get out. <laughs> Take your shit song and get out. <laughs> We're like Johnny Mathias. Um, <laughs> what he would say is, like, we're exactly like this. <laughs> it's like this. Gotta say, this is to us, it's like when a baby is born, or when a child is born. That's I was going to say, that's bad. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> we're also oh. great to listen to when you're driving home for Christmas. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh. I'm ticking them off he's, as I go. These Christmas puns he's are on the floor, aren't they? Yeah, it's Christmas time. Don't be a bell end. <laughs> carry, on, carry on talking about this all night. Like, How many of them have written down? <laughs> you're like those young men from age 17. Oh. Just like, stay another day. Oh, <laughs> oh no. You have no. honestly written all them down, John. Oh. Yeah, we're working on these all day. <laughs> Go on in, what else you got? Oh, last one. You know, just like Mariah Carey sings every year, all we want for Christmas it's for you to like, listen, and subscribe. Hey. Very good. Oh, that I like. That is good. <laughs> now get out. <laughs> Bye. See you next Christmas. I'm oh, glad you didn't so say see you next Tuesday. Yeah, just that. <laughs> so what can everyone remember? Like, let's, let's bring it into Christmas. Can anyone yeah. remember any special wrestling gifts they were given? Yeah, that VHS, that was literally the only one I've got to yeah. do wrestling. Yeah. yeah, I had my first ones, obviously, the um, Battle Royal Royal Albert Hall, the two figures I had. Any pants? I didn't get any pants. Well, no. Do I, you want a pair? I'm not, I'm going. <laughs> Come on. You yeah, there's, five, <laughs> there's five pairs It's a snug here, fit, right? mate. But... I, I get into them. Oh, I'm curious, Quinn. Right, prove it. <laughs> By the way, if anyone did, who's out there in this land, actually watch... Our evil Santa earlier. Johnny is going to do a video within the next couple of days. He says yes. where he is going to explain how he got those pants. Full so detail. It'll be about ten minutes. Be on the video. Fa- yeah, be on the Facebook page. Yeah, it will. I be, can't wait for this. I, it will be in detail of the pants. Um, I might take some pictures of the pants so people can see the pants. I will show you the pants from different angles. Well, don't worry, angles. you can fucking take them on. They're not standing <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, look, and to full detail... You You're know. not taking them home, stupid. No! <laughs> no, That's I'm what not. I'm saying, not standing here. I'm, I'm not, you know, going into nostalgia, I feel like getting a stick and throwing them across the room. Remember when you used to do that? <laughs> <laughs> You used to see like a dirty yeah. pair of pants and you used to get like a stick and lob it in your mouth. <laughs> what if people still do that? Oh, I don't know. Oh, surely. What's everyone doing next week? Oh, no, it's Christmas. <laughs> I don't know if people are as childish as that anymore. I don't know if they're doing it. Shame on you if you're not. Serious. Oh, mate. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, anyone that's listening to us that's in like. 20, 30 years younger than us, mate, you missed out on on literally the best childhood ever. Oh, you could do it with dog shit as well. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember you used to what, Let's it? not... Because <laughs> I know what you're leading to. Let's not even go to that. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can be name, and, name and shame people for this and they would never forgive us. Yeah. Oh my god! I remember, It'll be I, years I'm down the line. Do one. Do one, right? so fucking funny. Don't name the person. I'm not naming him. I'm not naming him, right? But you might have been there. So it's so fucking funny. I'm pretty right? sure I know what's coming. I, I skewed piece of dog shit, right? <laughs> and I threw yeah. and, and and it was on there pretty well. I know. And I threw it. I threw it at someone, right? And I, I know. I, I can't say who it was. And they tried to run away from it, and they, they did a pretty <laughs> this good job. This was brilliant. And they Disgusting. Hit, it hit the back of their heel as they were running, flicked the stick up, the shit come off of it, hit them in the top of them, hit them as they were running, moving forward. It was like the greatest piece of effects ever. We at Top Turnbuckle Podcast do not condone throwing feces. We're not chimps. <laughs> Can you remember that? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god! Oh, if you filmed that, you could have said it. You'd be framed. I, I can't remember, remember who it was. I know who it was. <laughs> You remember it hitting the back of their yeah. head all flicking up? It's so funny. Can we, can it's we, the can stick. We, can we turn the mic off for five seconds yeah. just while I tell Johnny who it was? Right. <laughs> we're, back, we're back on. Oh, God. We've actually had to have a break after that, oh. guys. Yeah, Ooh. that was a lot longer than five seconds. God damn. Oh. All kids do that. All kids do it. Do you know what? I don't think kids now do. Well, they're missing fucking hell. <laughs> I don't think kids do anything nowadays. No, they don't. They glue to the... Do you know what? Right, if you're a kid out there and you're listening to this, fair play if you are, that's great. But listen to us. Get a stick. <laughs> no, don't. No, that's not where I was going with this. <laughs> Next time you see one of your best mates you've known since you were five. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Ignore that bit. Listen to our podcast. Tell all your mates about this podcast. Behave. And just put your phone down and go out. Do something. Don't sit behind your... Fucking script. No, I'm not. I'm ending up going on a fucking rant here, aren't I? <laughs> Don't be such fucking hermits. Get out, you know. Oh, that really does sound like a dad thing, doesn't it? Our, our yeah. thing, by the way, oh. is, our thing is intended not for a child. Is it? Oh, yeah, true. All right. If you are a child and you're listening to this, one, shame on you. Two, shame on your parents. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fucking listen to a word I say. So I'm swearing at children now. Um, or if you're a small person yeah. who's actually 35 who yeah. can pass as a child yeah <laughs> you <Just laughs> <Mate, that, that's laughs> <what, yeah. laughs> can we get off the throwing the dog <laughs> shit conversation that's <laughs> nostalgia I swear what is, I yeah. tell you what you laugh what you, the fuck has that got to do with wrestling we laugh, we laugh and stuff but I tell you what that's given us a fucking good laugh all these years later. <laughs> oh, Christ. God, where On that we? note, should we have some questions? What will, what will yeah, we well, you can do. Well, let's have a look at what our wonderful, wonderful listeners I've got one. I've land. got one. When was the first time you picked up a stick? No. <laughs> right. Where should we start? Um, when was the first time you picked up a stick and grabbed a pair of pads and threw it at your mate? <laughs> First, firstly, in the question <laughs> section, I'd like to thank Darren Brown, who, after watching the last live video, where sadly I wasn't on due to illness, and thanks to my uh, co-hosts, you pair of pricks, for announcing that I was suffering with a bit of a dodgy <laughs> belly. Yes, fine, that is true. However, Darren Brown just seems to have gone one better and it's not really a question. He's just said, you know, if there is any problems or technical difficulties, basically meaning my bowels, um, Darren wrote, surely you can just move the recording equipment close to the toilet if, if not recovered, fella. Um, thanks, Darren. Um, thanks. <laughs> and as Alan Wright output, no one wants to... <laughs> No one wants the um, background noises. You're absolutely right there, Alan. Nobody wanted that. And um, that's why I was quite active on the comments that weekend. But you're all better now. I am. I'm all fully better. recovered. That's what made me fucking laugh. Stu was like to us, um, I, I can't make it, I'm so unwell. And then he's in the fucking comments <laughs> section. Yeah. Oh, mate, honestly. No, I, we do appreciate you, actually. Oh, <laughs> do you know, right, do, right. Do you want to know how this started? Not really. Right. I'm going to I'm gonna try and keep it clean, right? I was so, yeah, there's no <laughs> shitty sticks involved or pants on the twigs. I wonder if that's right. how they come about. Well, it might have been, yeah. <laughs> You're going to wave it like a shitty stick. <laughs> Who has a shitty stick? James. Yeah. <laughs> so, the night before, I'd been at my Christmas works do. Now, I'll be opening, opening nice. I was bladded. I got absolutely bladded, as did everyone that was there. And... Um, I, I stayed at the hotel that I was at. Now, we all had like a three-course meal this out in the other, and it was really nice. I enjoyed it. Had a great time. Um, thoroughly enjoyed hearing the England supporters in the background kicking off about being robbed. But, you know, it brought amusement to the you know to the night. Anyway, so I get back home the next, next morning, about midday-ish. Uh, we get to about four o'clock in the afternoon and um, started feeling a bit, mm, not quite right. Get to six, skip to six o'clock in the evening, and just out of nowhere, I've had to bolt upstairs. Uh, came back down after nearly 20 minutes. Um, said to the missus, my, gut, my gut's really turning, I'm not, I'm, I'm not feeling good. And she suggested saying, Have you spoken to anyone else there? No, 
from the Christmas do, I messaged one of my colleagues and said, actually, I've been suffering with a pretty dodgy belly as well. We find out basically three people were as ill as I was. So um, I'm not going to name the hotel. <laughs> it was a lovely experience. However, my butthole would disagree with you. And there ends the section of my bowel movements. Um, anyway, so let's go back to the questions. Um, our next question comes from Scott Frame. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Scott. Thanks for getting involved. Um, his question is, how could y'all improve wrestling? It seems like outside the bloodline and MJF, I feel like wrestling has hit a lull. Oh, uh, there is stuff there, I think, but it just needs to... Uh, Okay, do you want John me to go first? So yeah, do yeah, this one you quite go first, easy. Yeah. Uh, I would condense everything down. Uh, I certainly wouldn't have the roster that was there mm. or is there in any promotion. I would condense everything down, go a little bit more old school, and I would have everything mean something. Yeah, everything have a story. Every wrestler have something to because do. Because I think when I think when Triple H first took over WWE, we looked like we were going in that direction. I think mm. with all of the people that we've got come in, which we'll probably bring up on the news later, mm. I think we've gone back to the stage where everything's a uh, kerfuffle again. Yeah, yeah. Where everyone has not really got a place it's, again. It seems like with you know, and don't get me wrong, like we we were talking about before we started recording, it was great that these you know Triple H took over. He was bringing these. You know, great talents back in, but now we're at that. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually, I'd kind of agree with Scott. It, it feels like a bit of a lull. We've got all these people back in there. Nothing's happening. With them. Where are they going? Yeah, they're just stuck. Well, you've there's got, got to be direction. When yeah. you bring someone back, you've got to have a plan of what you're going to do yeah. with them. Who, where, what's the Sh- first? Few surely years? there what's must have been happen? this thought out. You would have hoped so, but it doesn't seem that way at no. this present time. And I you've think we have to look back at Johnny. Because both of us were quite harsh when Johnny said about Johnny Gargano, but that's mm. actually true looking at it now because they're just stuck. Braun Strowman, another one. <laughs> I'm getting the yeah. evils. Braun, yeah. Braun has probably uh, he's just been there. on a course a little bit better than some of the yeah. others. I mean, he's not someone who I personally am that big a fan I of. Mean, oh, Dexter Loomis and... Uh... He's kind of had a storyline, but it's gone but, on for but, so long. Yeah, and it, it's now it hasn't. We haven't had that closure of it. Yeah, well, it's we, gone we on. Go, it's gone on too long. We can go into that later because yeah, there's yeah, someone oh, yeah, very yeah. Yeah. But, big in the news yeah. that we need to talk about. But yeah, I got. I got to give Scotty a shout out there. That, that is a brilliant question. Um, With AEW, at least before they did try to involve everybody mm. to do something. And the past couple of weeks, they seem to be back on track a little bit. Yeah. Especially last week was one of the best episodes of Dynamite they've done yeah, yeah. in a long time. And they seem to be putting more focus on a lot more of the other wrestlers who aren't yeah. being used as much. But I think that is the common denominator in that whole question. Because if you look at Scott's question, it seems like outside of the bloodline and MJF, MJF has got a plan. Mm. Yeah. The bloodline have a plan. Just no one There's else. no plan underneath. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, getting yeah. at. That's the issue. Yeah, yeah. Because those are the main stories on the show and they've got something that they've got in mind. Yeah. They just need more stories for more wrestlers. Going on around and the, and the thing is, that makes then the wrestler look better as a character. Yeah. Because when we're if they've got a reason to fight, in a feud or anything like that, then we can get behind the story. Mm. But without yeah. a story, if we can't just, get behind they're it. They're just yeah. stuck yeah. out there for another match with no meaning. That's it. Yeah. Hear me out. I have a solution. Not just AEW and WW. I mean, all. All solution. All, all around all solution. Around. Yeah. Dan Housen wins everything. I've seen the... You were supposed to discuss this, so yep. I know. <laughs> That's it. Danhausen wins everything. Danhausen becomes head of the table. <sighs> Tell me I'm wrong. I, exactly, you can't. <laughs> I, I like Danhausen. I swear to God. 
I'm, if you I, I, shit you, on Dan Housen, I'm with you. I'm not going to shit on him. I Everyone like it. knows my thoughts mm. on Dan Housen. I like the character. It's different. It's strange. But there doesn't seem to be any direction with him. But, right, hear me out on one part of this. Right, when he came out a couple of weeks ago as proper dark Dan Housen, did that not give you some like, ooh, <laughs> fuck the period no I just I, I, no, I'm, I might be seeing it one dimensional my way personally but I cannot see for the life of me how he is not a faction I can't I, I no, just that's can't, what I, I, that's I, what I want to see. see it any other way because like Johnny said he's looking at what can you do with no, him fuck, fuck Johnny <laughs> what can you do? Take him out of the equation. I was having as a <laughs> take fa- my pants back. I was having, take your pants back. <laughs> I was having him as a similar to a Heenan family stable, <laughs> but a more funny type of thing where he's got a stable around him. That's what I would do. Wasn't he with best friends, Orange Cassidy, for a little while? Yeah, but not in that, not not that way. Really? I would have him as the figurehead, yeah, talker yeah, of a group. He yeah. could wrestle from time to time. That's, that's what I said. Head, yeah. of the, head of the table. Well, head of the table implies that it's Roman Reigns. That's what I'm on about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck like, Reigns. <laughs> you know. Has nah. he had any main feuds or anything? Oh, really? No, he's not been... It's he no, difficult to book. Yeah, it's difficult it's to book. He's good at the backstage and the <clears> YouTube <throat> stuff and all of that stuff. Which he does Mate, he's a mega star when it he's, comes to that. He doesn't actually... Uh, I've said this over and over and people I know people get annoyed with me he doesn't actually need to wrestle he's talented enough just to what he does him and yeah. Davis he actually doesn't need to wrestle <laughs> he God, should mate, be that was good <laughs> he should be a manager he should be some sort of a leader of a faction head of the table yes <laughs> my opinion no, yeah, no. yeah um. so we all agreed um, Dan Housen wins everything all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of conviction, man. Come on. So what, does he have to face himself for everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Dan Housen becomes tag team champions with, you know, well, it's just Dan Housen. Doesn't Dan need any yeah. Any other questions? Or is that it? When's Dan Housen going to come head of the table? <laughs> but that is a really, really good question from uh, Scott. I thought you were on about mine. <laughs> <laughs> It is a yeah, really, it is. Really it's a brilliant question, question Scott. Yeah, that, that's the only thing I can. It's my opinion. That's what I would do. I would look at mm. everything and I would and give it to Dan sit Housen. down. <laughs> Fucking Dan Housen. Dan Housen. Housen. I want a money. I want a money. Did you ever see the clip on YouTube of him when he? No, when I tell he, you what. It, 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 according to everyone, I, I do quite a good Dan. You Housen. do, yeah. You ever see the video where he, um, oh, God, I can't remember who it was. Brian, oh, Brian Johnson, Johnson or Johnstone. Yeah. Um, and he broke character and started swearing. No. Yeah. It's a fucking travesty. Yeah. It, for me, he's he's very, very charismatic. And I look back. It's to brilliant. The, I look back to the manager thing. But that's the that's thing with me that you'll hear continuously mm. with him wrestling. I think it's a lost start and I think yeah. he needs to come back. Not enough managers. No, yeah, there's not. The, um, the, man, the manager's thing is a dying art. I've had another idea. To quote Michael Caine, Italian job. Hold on, lads. I've got an idea. Dan Housen manages everyone. What? Every single everyone. person. Every single yeah. one. Yeah. So, there you go. even if, like, two people yep. are wrestling, he's managing them both. Yeah, MJF versus Ricky Stark would have been even better if Dan Housen was managing both of them. That was a good match, though. Can seen. you imagine Moxley and MJF put Dan Housen, Dan Housen managing both of them? Does that match happen? To Stark. Yeah. 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 It's all right. I don't. I'm a fan of Stark, but I think he needs time. But he will. Yeah, he does need time, but he will get there. I think. And I don't like the. Uh, I don't like the gimmick. Not at the moment. A little bit more serious. I'm not a mega fan of the of the gimmick the way it is. Did you watch the promo? So, I enjoyed yeah. that. It. Yeah, I did. It was mm. good. But like the whole, to me, I can see how MJF can get him so easy saying like you're just an imitation of The Rock. I'd like to see 
like a, a, a small imitation mm. of the rock, not a yeah. good one. Yeah, hopefully in time. I think I change. think he's got his own path where he can be a bit like the rock, mm. but not exactly like the rock yeah. because he's sort of like a smaller version of the mm. rock, and it doesn't come across well to me. I do like him. I do like him a lot. If you remember, I I picked him for the oh, tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you did. Yeah. We uh we got any more questions on there? Our next question comes from our good friend Billy Morgan. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Billy. And he says, I'm a huge Sting fan. Do any of you get worried when you see him climbing shit these days? I mean, fair play for doing it. And I personally think he's still doing a great job, but still freaks me out. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. All of all of the older talent at the moment, I, I'm i not uh, happy about this last match thing. Mm. And I think that a lot of them are going for a cash grab in the wrong way. Yeah. I think Sting's doing well, though. I think he's used he's, barely enough. Yeah, he's yeah. doing well, but I can understand what Billy means. It's when he when he goes to pull out the big guns for these pay per views, I do get a little bit fearful. Yeah, I mean, do these dives off stages, and you know, I think if you've got a respect for a talent, mm. especially a talent like a Sting, you are going to worry because there's that. You, you do care about them and you don't... Yeah. I mean, Sting must be near 70 now. He's in his 60s easily. Yeah. yeah. You know, and... I'm sure I heard he was 65 or 66. I think yeah. he's injured at the moment, isn't he? He's he's, out. Sting's got a legacy where he doesn't need to do it. Yeah. No. you got it. I mean, credit where it's due. Looks great for his age. Yeah. He does. Still got, you know, phenomenal physique. And if he, he's still doing these quick moves and, you know high moves he doesn't even need to do much no no not at all but he's still doing it like he was 20 odd years ago I think it's admirable but I don't oh, yeah. think it's needed no no. no. I think I, I think not. there's a way of looking at it similar to how Billy looks at it there yeah. it is scary yeah, absolutely I mean, mate especially with someone like Flair when Flair had that last match I was legitimately scared that he was going to either so, die in the I, ring yeah, or have a serious I, I had mixed feelings uh, most of it was embarrassment I'm not going to lie. I ain't going to hold back on this. I thought it was fucking embarrassing watching that. Did anyone watch it live? Because I actually watched no, it live. Nah, no, I've watched, I, I watched it on I YouTube. I didn't like it at all. I, I, thought, just... I thought it came across shite because it, it shouldn't be happening at his age. It was it, to me. But it was scary as yeah, well. Yeah, it was to me because he's not healthy. No. No. Rick, he's not healthy not anymore. Not in the slightest. He's had multiple heart problems. I mean, there was a while back where you were praying for Ric Flair. That's right, yeah, yeah. You know, on Twitter, there was hashtag because he was in that bad state. He's saying he wants to be in the Rumble as well now. That's ridiculous. Oh, fuck off. He's back for the Raw 30th anniversary. Yeah, which is fine. <laughs> God. I give a shit. But Sorry. <laughs> who else would you like to see have one last match? Well, Ricky Steamboat has just had mm. his last one and he didn't do too bad. I've it? watched the highlights of that. i yeah. He didn't do a lot. He didn't we talked talk. about that and yeah. I said if there was ever anyone, I think me and Johnny said, if there was anyone who would come back at the age that they were and do this, he would be the one that I would go, I think he'll be all right. Mm. Here's a quick question for you two then. But in answer to that one, because there, there was a question. Yeah, but well, there was fuck a question. you, Stu. <laughs> there was a question. Yeah, but we had a question, didn't we? No. Someone's someone asked who would you like to see? Well, oh. yeah, that's that's what I was leading to. Oh, okay. See, alive or dead? Oh, right. Alive or dead? Who would you like to see have one last good match? Not a well, bring back for now. Yeah, alive or dead? We'll edit Silence. the pause. Out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult. Question. Oh, yeah. Um, it is a difficult question. <laughs> because if so, if someone says, do you want to bring someone back now, I'm against the whole world. Oh, uh, not elderly. I'll I'll, do you know what? I'll tell you what. If you could bring a past, re you know, a deceased wrestler back in their prime and wrestle anyone now, who would that, who would that, you know? Andre the Giant? Hmm? That'd be second on my list. I'm going to go with Bob. It, just purely for nostalgic reasons, I'd love to see Piper. Yeah. 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 
all the way. Big days. Any more, any more questions and we got uh, something else? Um, yeah, do you remember your first wrestling show that you attended? Yes, I do. It was a long, 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 long time <coughs> ago in Cardiff. Uh, I believe that pay-per-view was called Clash at the Castle. <laughs> yeah. Feels <laughs> so, so far away. But yet also like it was, as you said, only yesterday. Yes. Oh, I did a little rhyme. You did, that was very nice. That's I mean, me out. What, what, one of mine, <laughs> one of mine would be a local one. I mean, it would be like a local sports centre, you know, like an independent show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that was one of mine. Never got to go to one. You would, you would have like uh, people... It, you wouldn't get done as much back then for using someone's image. Like, no, no. Uh, not, you would have like the fake earthquake. Yeah, not British Bulldog versus almost Brett the Hitman Hart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went to a show and it had um, who was it? The fake Kane and the Legends of Doom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's nice. things like that. Yeah. It's like fake earthquake I mean, spelled double really, E R F. <laughs> really, you're you're making your show look like a knockoff, aren't you? Pretty I mean, much. It, yeah. it's, it's not great, is it? No. The easier to... Yeah, it's just, it's, you know. Yeah, but you know when keeps you buy like happy. counterfeit clothes and they're called... I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> Nike spelled like N-I-C-K-E. Yeah, it makes Who's it... Who's Nicky? It makes it shitty, doesn't it? Tommy Hillfinger. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so... There's got to be a porn star with that name. But yeah, I, I would say... I would say, and we talked about it, I would say probably the same... Uh, yeah, we might have, we, even, we been might have even been at the yeah. same show. I think it was one where it was a local school and mm. it was a uh, sports centre, in a sports yeah. centre. I remember there being a fake Undertaker there. There was a fake earthquake there <laughs> when I was there. Was, was he called Underfaker? Probably, yeah. Might I remember right. he walked out really slowly as well. <laughs> and I think I thought it was him. I Backwards, was doing the moonwalk. <laughs> yeah. I remember my... It might have been before that show or after, but I was at a holiday park, maybe Butlins or something, and there was a battle cat there, and he was wrestling. Um, I also remember another show around the time. There was Hawk. No, was it? Yeah, it was Hawk from the actual Legion of Doom was there. Oh, shit. And yeah. he was doing some tours over in the UK at the time, and this was around... I'd like to say this was... Maybe just after SummerSlam 92, sort of time, after they left. And it was him. And there was a relation to the Dynamite Kid there as well. I remember that. I, I saw Gangrel at Butlins. And they actually did the entrance for him. It was pretty <laughs> cool. Uh, David Heath, I saw. He was a really nice guy. You'd go get autographs with him. And he spent a lot of time with people. Didn't you go, I'm pretty sure it was you, Tommy. You went to a Mick Foley one. I've met Mick Foley, never wrestling. No, yeah, yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Um, yeah. Book signing. Yeah. Yes. Lucky bastard. I remember in 1997, I went to an EWA show in Walthamstow, London, and this was when, like, ECW and WF were, like, feuding. Mm. Is that the dogs place that you went to? The, uh... Where the Your dogs... Grand. Yeah, the Greyhound race. It might be. Yeah, because Walthamstow is really famous yeah. for that. I remember there was Rob Van Dam was there and Sabu and yeah. it was a tournament and um, they were meant to face each other but they refused to face each other at the time and Mikey Whitbreck was there as well and I remember getting his oh, okay, autograph. Yeah. That was quite a good show. Mm. I mean, I just, apart from that, I've been, I've, I've been to WWE. You have too, haven't you? Yeah, my first WWF show was Capital Carnage in 1998. Yeah, right, was, uh, yeah. Right. December, nearly November, December. It was, yeah. Main event was Austin versus Kane versus Mankind versus Undertaker. Were you there for the the Vince McMahon speech? The famous one where he got in the ring and said about, like, the immigrants in the UK? Yeah, I think I was. What? Haven't you ever seen that? No. I don't think that's on the network anymore. Oh, no. I wonder why. It's got to be on YouTube, hasn't it? Come out as a heel when he slammed the UK and uh, how we allow different cultures in to lead. Jesus. And things. That was really bad. Like, it, if yeah, you did it, it you now. Did. Yeah, you can do it now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure he's not in any trouble at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Obviously, 
I'm talking from his point of view. We totally condone that. Jesus but yeah, Christ. there is on that on on that show. He come out and did this really bloody hell. Yeah, because I, I remember seeing it recently. I can't remember where I saw it. Probably was on the network, and I watched it. And I was like, "Fucking hell!" <laughs> you can't get away with that now. <laughs> I can probably find it. It's probably out there somewhere. No, I'm yeah. gonna have a look on YouTube tonight. Yeah, We've got any other questions that we can think of? Why have you bought me children's pants? <laughs> <laughs> well, tomorrow night you'll find out. <laughs> Tune in. <laughs> ah. One good question from Rob Shepard, and it's a two-part question. Uh, question one, how many times have you watched the Mandy Rose leaks? I didn't know there was any. <laughs> <laughs> I, Did haven't, you... I didn't know it, but I'm, I'm guessing there must be. Right, you know. so... I, I know I'm... she's done like an OnlyFans type thing, but I have I didn't know that I there was like... leaks from that, I reckon. I'd... Right. I didn't realise any about it, any of this until I started, you know, it was the day after NXT and as you do, you always get your NXT tweets and, and like saw one with and new. Like, ooh, who's won a title? Had a look and it was Mandy Rose had lost the title. Like, okay, seems like a bit of a shit run to end that on a house show. And then started seeing all the backstories behind it that she was sacked because of, I will say it, I, I don't know. I haven't looked. I'm not going to look. I don't care. Apparently, there's like slight adult content for some of these videos and photos that have that you know that she obviously does for a you know I don't know if it's OnlyFans or something else, whatever. And um, and that's what's caused her to be sacked. So the answer to your first question, Rob, is zero. And his second question is, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How, how dare very you? dare you? Very how dare you? Dare you? I, uh, I think that we can go into more depth if we go on some news. Yeah. Yeah. So I, okay. think, I think we've got to say on that, haven't we, all of us? Absolutely. Yeah. In terms of the question, I didn't even know that there was any. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want to go first? On, on what? On this. Which one? What uh, the Mandy Rose thing. Oh, what, right now? Oh, actually, no. I'll Save that for the, news. for the news, yeah. yeah. Um, Billy Morgan has another question, which I can't quite see the top of. Um, sorry, bear with. I'll do that bit again. I don't know, I meant that he's got one above that. I thought we'd done that one, didn't we? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Billy Morgan's follow-up question from his last one, because stupidly I didn't read it out, was uh, AEW UK. When it happens, obviously, which they are planning next year on coming up to AEW. Yep. Uh, sorry, AEW is planning on coming to uh, UK. Which hostel are we all staying at? I can't Ooh. say the name, but uh, we're staying in the one at Cardiff, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going from Cardiff to Craven Cottage. Yeah. You can fuck right off. That <laughs> no, was so good. It's Swansea, no. sorry. It's Swansea, we'll sorry. We'll see if we can find the absolute <clears throat> if, worst. Yeah. Do you know what? As and when the tickets are announced, the dates are announced, we'll book tickets, I will personally make it my goal to find the grottiest little hostel I can find. And Five pref- pounds a night. Yeah, preferably an absolute sausage fest. <laughs> Which would be, you know, great. And we have to find the obligatory Hannibal Lecter sharpening knives in the background. Get, I know one. Still I know one. If you, if you want one, I know a, a hotel that you could stay in, which is a hostel, I'm, basically. Do you know what? If it's without a shadow of a doubt, we all know that we're going to go to this AEW show when it happens. Yeah. Um, I would love, and I genuinely mean this. To, I, I actually would like to find a. I think we should make it our podcast goal to find another hostel that is worse <laughs> than that one. And that I demand, not ask, I absolutely demand any of you guys out there in listener land to join us. Yes. Come and stay with Come us. Come and stay with us. Snuggle with us. Yeah, we'll share pods again. We'll share yeah, pods. Join, join Johnny and share yeah. in the pods. Yeah, because we'll James wear. won't. No, <laughs> Come and join us in the sweat box. <laughs> Oh, 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 
No. Dirty box. The dirty, dirty sweat box. box. <laughs> You can have a fair pants yeah. every day. So, Billy, day. if you're all up for joining, <laughs> Rob, anyone else out there, anyone. Jim, Lee, all of it. If, You'll all be in there. Yeah, we'll all have a nice, cosy little, you know, Get snuggle together. up. We can watch some WWE Network and we'll all snuggle up in one yeah. pod. You can make a one faction pod. and go and have a war with the other fucking room. It was I know, all different you're talking. rooms, yeah. weren't there? Was there another room? Oh, mate. There was loads of different yeah. rooms. So it was about, eight or, it was about eight or nine doors, oh, mate. I didn't realise yeah. that. Yeah. Forbidden doors. I wonder what yeah. they were like. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? We're going to have war games. War like, games. Proper, like, you know. They were like a cage, right, weren't yeah, they? Were, oh, oh, mate. Yeah. Like the, dra- the drawer underneath. Oh, yeah. That was a proper, like, <laughs> fucking zombie apocalypse cage, that was. not it was for me bag. Hostel of hell. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, guys. If you know if any of you are up for it. To be fair to this uh, Swansea hostel, the actual place was not that bad. There were two issues with it. One was the people, and the other <laughs> <laughs> who was staying there, and yeah. the other one was I don't know. I the mean, co- cost settings. of living. I don't know how much it's costing them to run it, but I am telling you, the place was as hot as. Hell, I, it's, I do I, not know. I swear blind, if the devil himself would have walked down that room, he'd have gone, fuck me, bang the air con. I'll, I'll give you guys an example of how hot it was, right? I walked in to the other guys and I didn't know that they felt the same. And I said to them, do I look all right? Because I thought I had a virus or something. <laughs> because I was dripping with sweat, literally dripping with sweat when I walked in there. I don't Horrendous. know about you guys. I still remember waking up in the middle of the night, I put all my clothes on, yeah. and I got sweated. <laughs> <laughs> Who did top? Who See, got up as well? I'm not, not going to lie. That's you know, I've, I've as, as you guys know, I love my live music, and I've I've seen some brilliant bands this year. One of which was a bucket list for me. You know, going to watch Nine Inch Nails at the Eden Project. But I've got to be honest, for the whole experience, going to Clash at the Castle was just one of the best experiences I've ever had. It was so fun. Including that just <laughs> awful perfect. hostel. It just, don't get me wrong, it was so hot. <laughs> and I mean, like, I used to be a, a, I I used to be a chef. I got the fuck out of there. I was out of there at like <laughs> fucking were. seven o'clock in the morning walking around Swansea. I could not I've worked in there. kitchens <laughs> that are colder than that. <laughs> Not in in summer, oven. it was ridiculous. I'm like, fuck knows how you kept all your clothes oh, I have on no and sweat. Idea. Sweat, I have three tops, I think. And, and a, a fucking up. hoodie. Gloves, woolly hat, scarf. Sleeping bag. Pants. <laughs> Chainmail. <laughs> Stab vest. <laughs> <laughs> the fame of this podcast really is pants, isn't it? I've yeah. Heard it being <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by five year old pants. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. 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 Oh my god! That's being edited out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. That is that's one of the highlights of my year, man. It, it was so good, so so good. Um, I think certain little stories capped it off. Yeah. I think the walk was hilarious. <laughs> looking, back, walk. looking back, looking oh, back, I find it, it so, funny now. Yeah, I was livid at the time. <laughs> Fucking we livid. We should have got a taxi. <laughs> oh, so don't. Funny. Do you know how embarrassed I would have been to pay five quid? <laughs> he literally would have just taken us in like a 360 turn and straight up a road. <laughs> it was, I'd have been it was livid. across the road. I was absolutely fucking livid. Oh. Out the back entrance. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> so going on to nostalgia again, if we're carrying on with nostalgia, who was everyone's favourite wrestler when they were younger? Because it's a very different thing when you're older. I'd go for... Like I liked Marty Jannetty when he broke up with the Rockers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Perfect. I was a big Bret Hart fan. From 91, sort of like the SummerSlam match with Perfect, and especially when he won the title in 92. Yeah. For 93, I was Bret Hart. I wasn't a Hulk Hogan fan anymore or anything like that. It was just Bret Hart the whole time. Um, I liked Razor. I liked Demolition as a tag team. Yeah. One, two, three kids. I liked... Uh, Owen Hart as well. Um, I like Johnny Polo as well quite a lot as a manager. Yeah. Yeah. Go <laughs> Raven. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, James? I think Savage. 
I think no. I, I think I lied to Andy Savage, as I remember. No. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I think I liked Savage. I think I liked Warrior. You know, now I would now I wouldn't. No. But as a kid, I think I liked Warrior. Like all the energy with the fucking entrance and all that. I didn't mind Warrior. I liked him in '92 when he came back at. WrestleMania 8, which is like mm. a bad time for him, really. Yeah. I quite yeah. liked him then. Yeah, but it was exciting, wasn't it? That yeah. whole WrestleMania 8 entrance yeah. and him coming back. and But, yeah. I've got to agree with James. Mm. Yeah, Ultimate Warrior as a kid, absolutely loved. <clears throat> it was, like you said, it was the excitement of seeing him sprint down sprint down the gangway just yeah. running around the ring and getting up and doing his little you know it's, it's that's diff- my impression of him shaking the top rope it's a different <laughs> thing isn't it as a kid yeah like now we look at the technical side of people and things yeah. like that as we're older but as a kid it was I more feel that- like I, I still like the technical side a lot more yeah then. you might have done like with the Bret Hart and mm. perfect one two three kid yeah, yeah, yeah. I chose them over Hulk Hogan or Oma Warrior I was always a fan in. of Bret yeah, yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, Bret Hart as well. Um, for again, and I keep saying this about this guy every time, nostalgic reasons, just because my late dad Scottish and he brainwashed me into being a Scotland supporter for football and rugby and that. Roddy Piper, yeah, you know, is hard ass wearing a kilt, fucking brilliant. Love that. Um, I like the big boss man, yes, a lot of people did, yeah. I, mean, I thought he was great. He was larger than life with all that, uh, all, all the cop stuff yeah. on and everything like that. You Spinning know? of the nightstick yep. as he came I, out. I, I like Big Boss Man, but I always preferred him as the Attitude Boss Man. See, so a lot of people I, don't. You know what? I didn't. I liked him more like that. I no. didn't like him before. Um, but yeah, I just, I liked him when he was in the Attitude as well. The, I mean, the last two I'm going to say was just for obvious reasons because of the look, which was Legion of Doom. Yeah, yeah. I've never I, seen I, anything I, like I, that. I can't see that. I can't see that anyone's not going to see mm. people in shoulder pads with spikes on. Yeah. Cole are you know at a young age. I just prefer demolition. I always prefer demolition to Legion of Doom. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the S and M for Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Do you look at Mad Max Two as a porn film? Then? I do. I actually do. <laughs> it's, it, it's interesting demolition because you look back and laugh now. I think that came up in the chat recently. Mm. Like yes. on a poll, everyone put like Stein and Brothers have beat Demolition. Demolition was so over. Mm. If you yeah. put it back to that time when Demolition were like, take it just about WrestleMania 4 to WrestleMania yeah. 6 time, yeah, they were on top oh, of yeah, the man. golden age of wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. They were the best in WWF. Team, the main tag teams they had. Well, you think back to who they had. Yeah, yeah. And they're at the top of the pole, and they also break the tag team mm. record they during do. that period. Only until a couple of years ago. Recently. Yep. Yeah. You've got, day, yeah. you've got teams who are over, like Strike Force. Yeah. You've got the Heart Foundation. You've got the British Bulldogs. Yeah. You've got the Rougeos. You've got the Brain Busters, the Rockers. Conquistadors. Yeah, all of those sort of fucking teams. <laughs> Johnny's on a BDSM fucking team. Oh, yeah, is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But all those sort of fucking teams, you list them, and Demolition are top of the pile at that yeah, point. Yeah, And they they yeah. hold the titles for nearly two years. Obviously, when Crush came along, he wore them down a lot. I still liked him when Crush was with him. Bill Eady leaving or yeah, having the illness it wasn't was the, the big issue. But I still didn't mind it with Crush, because I, I thought it was all right still. It wasn't as good, but it was, it was they changed yeah. it up at least a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Anything else, Johnny? Nostalgia-wise? Um, Nostalgia-wise. What about TV shows we used to watch? Like, did you used to watch All American? Or like Raw? Now, nah, before Raw, like oh, Superstars. What, like, uh, I used to like Primetime. Yeah, Primetime was good. I yeah. can't say I ever watched Primetime. So when they used to sit around the table, weren't it? And um, you had like Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Hugh Jim. I, I, I sent you one. Yeah. Do I, you remember the Savage and the Perfect yeah, one? Yeah, that's, that's what I was about. literally just about to get to. I never saw any of those back in the day. No. But it was only until re- recently yeah. as well, very recently, um, James started sending me the YouTube links. And I'll be honest, the stuff that I've seen, the stuff that you've sent me led me on to other bits. Yeah. And it, it, is, it was, you know, I, I wish I'd seen it first hand, like first time round. It was very clever how they mm. set up angles back then. Because yeah, the, yeah. The, the warrior left 
stopped in 92, yeah, over the steroids incident. Mm, I think that happens right. in the UK. I think it did. Yeah. yeah. I think they found someone in a hotel room in the UK mm. and they had to sack him. But I sent that one to Stu over because there was a big kerfuffle yeah. over what was going to happen. That's and it was right. the one where Perfect and Heenan fell out. Mm. He turned onto Heenan and he poured the water over Yeah, and that was on prime time. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. And, and, and before that, prime time was actually even better because it was Gorilla and Bobby on their own. Mm. Yeah, they did it for a while on their own. They used to go to like, um, it'd be the pay-per-view shows and they'd go to the pay-per-view and do the show outside it. Yeah. Outside the building and things like that. Or they go to different sets. There's and one with Gorilla Bobby would do and, little skits, yeah, and it yeah. was it was. I used to like that. That was good. There was one where they did like a Wild West thing, doing like these actions and stuff, and they're on like a set of Wild West, and Bobby's <laughs> being thrown through the window. There's all things like that. It's it quite was good. so talented. Good old Bobby, yeah. bless him. There's one I always remember. Do you remember um, the Bushwhackers manager Jameson? Yes. There's one on prime time where the Berserker comes out and gets him. Takes him, he ties him to this bit of wood and he takes him to the top of the building and throws him off the building. Good God. <laughs> Jameson, if you're looking puzzled, Stu, Jameson was this, I think he was supposed to be an orphan. Right. And he, you were, again, you wouldn't get away with this now. He no. was seen in the crowd and he had holes in like his uh, shoes. His and his all glass, twisted. yeah, right. his glasses were. Uh, taped together, and he, he was yeah, he was like supposed to be like a sort of a, I don't imply like a nerd, he was like a homeless of. orphan, yeah. right? Older okay. man who had like, maybe learning difficulties yeah. or something. Yeah. People, the wrestlers, the the, the faces that have him in their corner, like bushwhackers, yeah, right. a lot of time with him. Okay, it, it's very short lived. Yeah. Can't imagine why. I think he was at a pay-per-view. I think he was at the Real Rumble one 92 time. 92 when the Bush Records were against the Beverly Brothers. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, against the busy uh, Kicks a Genius up the arse. That's right, yeah. God, uh, my brain. That's uh, what I'm saying. My, my brain's <laughs> full of shit. brother. Yeah, uh, Lenny. That's it. Lenny Poffo. That's like um, All-American Wrestling. It, it was like a recap show, but he had Gorilla and... Uh, no, it was Bobby Heenan and Mean Gene, Oakland. Yeah. They hosted it. And that was quite good. They used to do little skits and things on there as well. Yeah. Then you had Wrestling Challenge. Yep. Which was... Uh, it was kind of like was, superstars, but sometimes it would yeah, have a main event. That's right. They had, at least they had their own matches, which was good. I think Saturday night's main event, and I would say to the audience as well, anyone listening to this podcast, Saturday night's main event has a really cool feel to it. Yeah. With Jesse on the announcing. Right. And, uh, this this is literally me sitting this one out. I've seen Superstars, Saturday <laughs> night main event, and that is literally it. I've always thought a good should thing, bring that if, back. if you've got mm-hmm. the network, mm-hmm. a good thing to go back and watch, which was kind of like they're in your houses yeah. at the time, that had a lot to do with Dick Ebersole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And it was uh, Saturday night's main event, and it was... There were some really good matches on there. Mm. Big things used to happen, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was where they set things up for pay-per-views, okay. but they were big matches. But you had the big rematch of Andre and Hulk on there. I think then... that's the most watched thing they've yes. ever done on network television. Okay. I'm sure I read that somewhere. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, or at the time. It might even be still today. Yeah. Yeah. So I did, <laughs> again, so nostalgia and things like that, I've, I've started... Oh, I can't remember. You guys are know straight off the top of your head. Um, started watching an old WrestleMania um, yesterday and carried on a little bits of it today, but it was the 60-minute um, Iron Man match. WrestleMania 12. 12. That's the one. Yeah. What, Brett and Sean? I've never watched it. It's okay. I think we were talking about that, me and Johnny, we were, recently. Weren't we? yeah. It's okay. And a lot of wrestling connoisseurs go, it's the greatest thing ever. For me, it's too long. I find it quite boring. Yeah, at times um, I got five minutes into it, and I, I I didn't turn it off because I was bored. Right, I turned it off because I was, you know, family stuff to you know yeah. doing at home. Um, that's not a bad pay per view. It's, it's not well. bad. It's okay. I've seen worse. It, it really is one match. Yeah. It really is one match. Uh, it's, as far as WrestleManias go, it's incredibly short on the roster. What have you got at WrestleManias? Undertaker Diesel? Yep. 
You got Undertaker Diesel. You have got Ruddy Piper and Gold Dust, and yeah, that goes which on takes throughout on two matches. It goes literally. on throughout the whole pay per view. It's crazy to think that there was going to be OJ Simpson. They yeah. That yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yes, yeah. you've got a six man tag that yes. starts it off. Oh, uh, British Roberts. Bulldog, only Owen Hart, and Aiden. Yes, versus Yoko, Yoko Ahmed, and Jake, Jake the Snake that's Roberts. It. Yeah. Savio Vega, Steve Austin. Yes. Yeah, very short in the middle of mm. it. Yeah, you've got... Well, after the first yeah. one. Because I think I'll be wrong, that six-man tag was all right. Yeah. I it's enjoyed like, that. It's okay. It's an okay WrestleMania, but the the real build-up for that WrestleMania is just that match. Yeah. yeah. Like, everything was focused on that match. Yeah. Yeah, the Return of the Warrior as well, goes Triple H. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a real... Oh, shit, that is. One minute match. Oh. It starts weird as well because it starts with uh, Triple H oh, pedigree in it. It's yeah. Also, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah and he just up. no sells it. Yeah. And it's also, I didn't realise that was the introduction, first introduction of Sable. Yes. Yes, yeah, so Mark Mirror at the back. Yeah. yeah. And then him and Triple H have a They're bust up brawling. backstage. That's right. Which is quite possibly one of the lamest bust ups I've ever fucking seen. Was Mark was Miro awful. coming into yeah. the company at, the time, at this yes. point? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was terrible. Body Donners versus the Godwins is on the free That's on free for all. Yeah, mm. the title change. That's it. That's it. See, That's it. Right, here's one thing, and I've always thought this. I've never asked anyone else this. Right, Mark Mero. Yeah. Do you not think he looks like the singer Little Richard? Yes. Like yeah. when he started having surgery? Yes. Yeah. Fuck it, that's like scary. Yeah. <laughs> Because every time he comes on, I just feel the need to go, Lucille! I think that was part of the gimmick. I think it's so, it was When he was Johnny B. Bad. I like Johnny B. Bad. Yeah, Johnny, I think that was part of the gimmick, the glitz and the glamour, because he used yeah. to have a like stick that yeah, he used to fire with all glitter right, coming out right. of it. Uh, because I've heard a few people on podcasts and things say, that Vince was really big on him being the next big megastar of WWF, but what <laughs> they didn't realise was as if that that is what Vince thought. Well, that you got, that you didn't realise you have to have fucking charisma. Well, he thought <laughs> that he could do more than Johnny B. Bad, and what he actually was was he Mark Miro was Johnny B. Bad. Yeah, there was nothing else really, was there? Like he, what did he did he win like the IC title? Yeah, like the Wild Man was That's just right. Johnny B. Bad. It wasn't. Yeah. anything different except for him having makeup on mm. yeah. and hit, and that glitter stick. stick. And then he became Mark Mero from well, the, the boxer. Boxing. Yeah. He had an injury, didn't he? That's right. Yeah. And he, they, they had to ground well, him. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it wasn't the same. I, I, never, I, I never thought he was that great anyway. I, no, I got a little I bit of a kick out of Johnny B. Bad. I thought he was dull as horse shit. I liked him as Johnny B. Yeah. Johnny B. Bads is actually not that bad. I've not watched any Johnny B. Bad stuff. I know it sounds stupid, but mm. he isn't actually that bad. I Johnny B. Bad's like not actually that bad. He's quite Johnny B. Good. <laughs> Johnny B. Good. Oh, yeah. But that was yeah. the type of character he played. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. even saying Johnny B. Good reminds me of him. <laughs> yeah. with the, 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 he was that type of person. I just can't hear that and not think of Back to the Future. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that type of music yeah. was what he was going for. That type of like... Uh, not necessarily a music. It's that fifties rock and roll. The personality. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah little Richard. Done, yeah, yeah. He's done quite well now. He does like speeches and stuff. I, was I, I, I heard he warned someone. He said he'd real estate. I heard was he that was an else? escort. No, he's like a massive like he goes to these places and just does these talks. I heard he was an escort. But like, I watched one of them and it was really good. Like, yeah. it's, he's very good at like the things he does now. He goes out to colleges and universities and he talks to the people about their <clears> life and stuff and. What to expect? And so things. I did read a recent comment that was, and it was on another pro wrestling page on Facebook, and it was um, him describing when he first found out that Sable had cheated on him and who it was with, and then he found out it was Brock Lesnar, and just went, "Yeah, some people just got to learn to forgive straight away." Like <laughs> fucking hell, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we can move right. on if you yeah. want, guys. What shall we talk about next? I don't. So, 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 so. It's Christmas time. There's no need to be afraid. Fucking nailed that. <laughs> you did. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's start that again because that totally threw me off. Um, so, we're going to um, head on with our 
final, is it? Yeah, oh, nice. It's our final, <laughs> final topic of the year. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Jerry McDonald. In the Do you know what? I want to put a little jingle in there, but I'm so fucking worried that it's going to get copyright struck. Oh, fuck him. No, you would be so shocked what. at what it struck. Do you know... Do you know You'd be able to do it on Spotify. The main news that's come out really, because we expected it to be quite quiet over Christmas, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, didn't we just? It's the Mandy Rose controversy, really, guys, isn't it? <sighs> yep. What's everyone's thoughts? I think it's a crock of shit. Yeah, yeah I do. Shouldn't have. She, I don't know how you guys feel. Personally, I think at the moment she has carried that show. Yeah, I think it's a, for me it's even a way. Oh, sorry, from, Toxic Attraction yeah. have carried that show. For me, it's even away from how well she's done or anything like that. For me, it's more, it's just complete double standards. Absolutely. But how long was she champion? A long 450 time. 450-something days. I think she was approaching Askus. She yeah, was very close to it, yeah. I feel sorry for her because obviously she had struggled on the main roster to... yeah. Get her foothold into a character and yeah. build herself up, and I could see her coming in with toxic attraction as a Massively. faction, yeah, and yeah. then being a threat, yeah. And I just think it's sad for her. You are not going to stop this in this day and age. No, no, you're they not going to stop I mean, this. It's not just her. I feel sorry for it's the other two as well. I mean, was it G- Gigi and Lacey? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, so, yeah, like. Those three as a fraction, they were really going places. Yeah, they were doing really, they really were well. Absolutely brilliant. And I genuinely like I'll be honest, Mandy Rose when she was on the main roster, I thought she was dull as shit. Yeah. Absolutely dull as shit. They managed to repackage her, put her with these two. Yeah, like, right. And it was brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And I genuinely started really enjoying NXT again. Mm-hmm. Because we'd had that phase where, you know, the big names were being brought up and then they were all fired and now they're back again. But NXT was lacking something. Do you think, just on, this is a small tangent, right? But this goes back onto the question that we said earlier. Mm. Do you think it would be a good idea to move some of the main roster guys back down to NXT? Absolutely. To bolster NXT back up? Yeah. Yeah, haven't they already started? Did they do it with um, a few? Nakamura, the, the New Day are back there. Yeah, they're the champions. Because they're they? NXT champs now. Are they really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe they are starting to start. I, I just thought that I made so. sense. But they've 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 cut the nose off despite the face by sacking her. That is a terrible call. I think this has more to do with the contract situation and whether you are a independent contractor mm. or I this is difficult because I understand the uh, the concept of there's a contract there and you mm. mustn't break it let's not get that wrong right because I do understand that but the problem is is they've made it so blurry as to what you can do yeah now we've had this twitch fiasco yeah. remember the one ages. Yeah. I mean we had it with uh Oh, what's the what's the girl's name? Who was uh, Alistair Black's oh, Selena, Selena Vega, Vega yes, was yeah. fired over. Soraya it. had it as well. She had issues when she was still Paige. Yep. Um, We've Exa- had a few. Xavier Woods well, and the rest of the New Day as well. Well, here's the problem, you see, because I think that they get away with a lot, and I think that that's where they're blurring the lines. Here's here's another thing. Now, obviously, we've talked about the double standards thing, right? Mm-hmm. We think of other wrestling names that yeah. have done a lot worse. Mm-hmm. You know, serious drink incidents, serious drug incidents, and they've been given... Do you know what? Fuck it, I'm going to name one. Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Now, we know, we know I totally understand he's got his demons. I really do. But how many times has that man been thrown a lifelong? Oh, loads. Oh, loads yeah. Right. He'll probably have another one soon. Yeah. And she's, she does this, and she's out straight away. I'm sorry... Absolute crock of shit. I, I don't think that that's what's going to happen. I think that what's going to happen now is she's going to be really hired, similar to what Selena well, did. Have you seen the support that there yeah, is on it's social huge. media? It's, it's too think, much for WWE not to. No. I don't know if she would go back because I think well, that's she'd up be to all her. right. I think she can do this OnlyFans thing. She's making more money doing that 
I think it was would... reported that she was making around 250 grand a she month. Can just buy I, the money I for... think this argument, guys, is bigger than Mandy Rose. I know Mandy is the one who's got in trouble, but what I'm saying is I think moving forwards, and I don't know if anyone saw this in the Facebook, I wrote that WWE are going to have to now start to really look at this issue mm -hmm. moving forward and get a lot more lenient on it because this has been Absolutely. happening all the time and society's different now and social media is a massive part of life mm -hmm. yeah. and these people are going to go on social media at some point yeah. and they will use that name as well. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's... Because of the Twitter handles and things. Yeah, yeah there's so much you to know? it, yeah. It's not just. Sorry, I'll start that again. It's not just you know, female wrestlers that are using things like OnlyFans, and you know, I don't know if there's any other sites name whatever. I don't know. I'm not sure. Not fucking clue. But and I'm sure there probably are other you know, named companies such as OnlyFans and any other website that that do these sort of things, but it's not just women that are doing it. No, and it's not just adult either. No, it's it, not. It's hitting all, all parts of social media. Yeah. Up, 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 down, down is a really interesting one for me because this is where I say about double standards. Now, I posted something the other day from Up, Up, Down, Down, which is on that channel, and it is... Now, don't get me wrong, I like this... But I'm talking from WWE's point of view of how, where do you draw the line and where do you punish someone? They posted a, a match, New Day versus the Elite, mm. in video game competition, and that mm. is on Xavier Woods' channel. Now, that's got Kenny Omega, right? And this is when they're in AEW. And a lot of the jokes, because it's, it's those guys fighting mm. off... It's them guys taking the piss out of WWE in, like, you know, a roast. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, why is that allowed? And these other things aren't. But then again, because that, yeah. go to that video and go and watch it. How many, you know, and this, I'm not saying this, you know, just pointing fingers at the women. It's, it's not why I'm saying this at all, so please don't take it this way. Uh -huh. How many female wrestlers and, you know, valets and managers or whatever you want to call it in the late 90s, early 2000s post for Playboy? Uh, quite a lot. Yeah. Un yeah. Under, under the contract of yeah. WWE. Yeah. And Shawn Michaels even did it as well, didn't he? Uh, yeah, for yes. Playgirl? Playgirl. Yep. Right. That's all right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. obviously what she's doing is not. The reason why in their mind it's a difficult one because... In their mind, that was done through them. Uh, that doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't. It's, no, just, no. it's complete. Fucking, but, but, it's complete fucking hypocrisy. Yeah, because hypocrisy. Sorry. This happened, didn't it? Where they had a deal with Playboy yeah, for a little one. They right. had China do it. They had Sable do it. Yeah, and um, they were sort of doing stuff on WWF as well, and combining the two. I think at one point for a little while. But it, I mean, don't. I, I think the point is more on the social media side of it now. I think it's what can ridiculous. you do and what can you not do? And the the lines by WWE himself have been blurred so much that I wouldn't want to work there because I wouldn't know what the fuck I could do independently. These are independent contractors, remember? Mm. Yeah. These are not people who are just like I think, I think completely the, tied the down. Gen the general consensus is this is an absolute fucking travesty. It's very it's complicated. Absolute fucking crock of shit. She don't deserve that. No. At all. Like I said, personally, I feel like she has raised that company back up with um, Gigi and Lacey from Toxic Attraction. Mm -hmm. Those three women have carried that fucking company over the last year and a bit. How long has she been there for? She's, She's been, been there a years, long time. A couple of yeah. years now. Oh, what, down at NXT? Uh, yeah. Oh, WWE. She sorry. come in from Tough Enough. Right. Was it tough enough? She come runner up to the poor girl who recently died. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. yes, 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 yes. I didn't realise that. Mm. Yeah, she was the runner up. Mm. Yeah. It's crock of shit, man. I'm really sorry. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Sarah Lee, wasn't it? That's, That's right, it. yeah. I still think that, you know, 
she can she's earning more money than she's earning a lot of money mm. doing what she's doing. If she wanted to go back, yeah, she could always go to AEW one day and then WWE could Well AEW has the right idea because AEW does not stop no. individuals yeah. from going out on social media and having their own platforms. Yeah. Uh, and this is what I'm saying about WWE. They need to look at this because this is going on. They need to wake up and realise that we're in the 21st fucking yes, century. Exactly. Yes. I'm, so, you know, sorry, yeah. just a fucking butt in, but that is the real yeah, fact. Exactly. Now. That's you that's, need to that's, wake that's, the fuck up. Yes, yeah, that's, that's spot on. Yep. You know, because Fia yeah. Trinidad or whatever she's called, mm. Selena Vega had her own channel, and it was something over OnlyFans with her. So she's still got her. Uh, I think she does now. The yeah. OnlyFans, Selena. I think she still does. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I mean, no. I'm not subscribed. But <laughs> I don't know. But I believe what she was doing was her OnlyFans was not an adult thing. Not that it matters. But I remember watching her talk about it. And she said uh, it was for cosplay. Right. She's a cosplayer, isn't she? She does a lot right. with Mortal Kombat. And, yeah, all right. Yeah, she does mm. Jade from Mortal Kombat uh, a lot and things like that. And it was those sort of pictures that she was doing okay. on a subscription basis. <laughs> WWE basically found out about it, said that's not on, and sacked up. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's where my but argument is see, with it. Right, See, and, and this is, again, it's a complete fucking double standard, right? So we all obviously know who her other half is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We know... Malachi Black is, you know, in AEW. He's got his own clothing range called Black Mass. Mm-hmm. Still has now. Do you know who models those outfits? No. Selena Vega. Yeah. yeah. Buddy Murphy. Mm-hmm. And Rhea Ripley. Yeah. I mean... So why is that? Yeah. How is... How, that shouldn't be th- th- This is where the confusion right? lies and what I'm saying. That's what I mean. What's it's... allowed and what's not. Because... If she's doing cosplay, right... That's not a fucking issue. But it's, well, it's all, not. But it's all right for Malachi Black's, you know, and I'm not having a pop at that, you know, no, about black no. mass clothing. I fucking yeah. love it. I think there's some great designs for T-shirts and shit on there. But... Uh, oh, but do what, you know what, no, what you're doing is you're confusing you yourself in how silly it is. It's, it's ridiculous. Just because that's what I'm saying. What, yeah. what, what constitutes a breaching contract yeah. now? Because... I'll give you an example. Tyler Breeze is on Up, Up, Down, Down. Now, to my knowledge, he was he was fired from WWE. Yep. But he's yeah. still on there as Tyler Breeze. So what's going on now? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say to you guys. Like, Oh, no, no, I, I, I totally get where I you're coming from. I don't understand where you draw the line. No, it's... Uh, just take like what you mentioned about AEW with their stance on gaming and you know they other. Just, they just let it go. Do that. Yeah, it works. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Has it affected anyone with the wrestling industry? No. Does it no. fuck? No. In fact, it brings people in because yeah. it's bringing people in from the gaming yeah, industry. Exactly. Yeah. So welcome. Um, like I said, that goes straight back to the wake up. It's the twenty first century. Yeah. If it's going to gain you more viewers, more followers, that's good. Fair play. Yeah. That's what we're. You know. That's what people in that business over there for. That's why my argument is not based on the adult side of the women and what mm. they're doing. My argument is with it, Stu, what constitutes being allowed mm. yeah. more than what she's doing? Because they're going, well, she can't do this and that and she can't do this adult stuff and she can't do this. But they've done this to other people in different mm. genres and said, you can't do Twitch anymore. Wasn't it Adam Cole as well, didn't they? Yeah, Adam, they all had to delete their Twitch channel. That's right, yeah. Because they were okay. using WWE names. Grow the fuck up. But obviously that is their stage name now. Yeah. So, you know, they don't really want to give their personal names mm. out because they've become famous. It, bay Bay. Yeah, Bay Bay. That's his name. <laughs> but... Maybe. That's where it becomes... No. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's not how you say it, Johnny. <laughs> but, uh, you guys carry on. I, in all honesty, mate, I'm done with that. Have you got any other news? Yeah. Any other news? Yeah. 
Yeah. We all touched on it briefly when when before we did the the, um, the live video. Bray. Bray. Bray Wyatt. This is difficult, isn't it? Yeah. I'm bored. I, as James and Johnny know, am a massive, massive Bray Wyatt fan. I, and it really does pain me to say this, I'm starting to find this really fucking tedious. It's it's not building to anything, and it's taking... It's taking ages. Far too, too long. A long, long time. Far too long. Um, and with, obviously, the recent, very recent addition and appearance of Uncle Howdy... Do you know, I, I know we talked about it. Go for it, guys. What do you oh, think? Uh, I, I still hold out hope because I, really, so, I, so do I. I, I yeah. really, really like Wyndham. I really do. And I it's love more about him now yeah. for me. I just feel like it's just dragging on. Some more things should have happened by now. Mm. And oh, when did he come back? Was it September? September. Yeah. It's been a while now and it's just been the same, pretty much the same promo every week on TV. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to be really going anywhere. I absolutely stand with you what you say, James. And the same with you, Johnny, as well. Sorry. Um, I've got masses of respect for Wyndham Rotunda. I really I, I like him as a person. Yeah. Over the wrestling as well. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I wish the best for him, right. and I'm really concerned. Yeah, that I. This is not going anywhere. You've had this big build-up this, of it all. This come on, didn't it? Like an absolute freight train. Yeah. You were like, you had all this source code Following stuff, the clues, all the fight, uh, white rabbit. Jesus, how much time did we dedicate to? Everyone, that? everyone did. Everyone no. did. I mean. Are they still doing any clues like that now? No, no they've stopped. totally dropped stopped. the My Rabbit right. thing. Now, here's my sad part of it. There were loads of concepts, and we saw these from, I think it's the guy who you would know, this, the guy, uh, he done Slipknot's uh, masks. Uh, Tom Savini. Yeah, and there was the White Rabbit one. It looked sinister mm. and cold. Place Uncle Howdy, how we come out the other night yeah. with that. How, how what we were it's, in other words what we were expecting to what we, to got. What we got do you know what and as Johnny said off um, off mic earlier and I absolutely agree with this who did you think he looked like who did I say oh um the hitcher from the mighty boosh so for, <laughs> for any of our overseas listeners I'm the hitcher yeah the hitcher. the hitcher go on YouTube type in the mighty boosh the hitcher it is one of the most fucking ridiculous characters I've ever seen. I love it. I find that show yeah, hilarious. But this is kind of what it's just, yeah, it's Uncle just, Howdy looks oh, like, except the Hitcher looks fucking better. Yeah. I'll tell you what I don't like, that. guys, right? And this is with realism. I know it's a supernatural thing, right? But you hear, if you're LA Knight, mm. you hear this music... Or this strange laughing with this music and all these, uh, it was kind of like, it almost looked like fags, mate, didn't it? The uh, yeah, it did. stuff oh, coming yeah. down. Yeah. And then that comes out, Uncle has is mm. a cowboy and laughs. I'm sorry, in realism, I just shrug my shoulders and carry on beating up Bray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Well, go down there if, mask now, if that white rabbit thing come out, Oh. I get out of the ring and run away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't run away at the cowboy yeah. man. I'm what did he sorry. Do? Did he, run, he did run away, didn't he? He yeah, rolled he jumped, out of the ring the other jumped, side. He jumped but the barrier. I'm trying to give you what yeah. my perspective of yeah. it was because when I saw it, I would be like, fucking so, man in a co- we, costume. You know, like we, we got to select this. Like, from the minute all these codes and you know cryptic messages from Bray White started happening, man, fuck me, how excited were we? Oh, I thought we were going full throttle Wyatt yeah. six. Oh, I thought we man. were having Dutch come in, yeah, Vincent, Vincent, and we still uh, have Bo, no Liv, uh, and unfortunately, Big Red. Yeah, unfortunately, I hope that still happens. I, so do I, but I, I am. But I'm beginning to get so fucking concerned. I'm right beginning now. to get a little bit worried that this is going so slow. It's losing everybody. And we're going to end up having a mountain to climb to get this back to yeah. the level. I was, I'm worried it's going to send um, Wyndham off 
track. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the... I'm glad that you guys felt the same way because mm. a lot of people have... To be fair, a lot of people are very hyped up by what they saw. They mm. thought it was really good. Yeah. I will I tell know. you that. I didn't, personally. I, I looked at it and I thought that that character did not look threatening at all. Well, the one the other day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, not at all. I, I, I thought it looked like a poor... And I hate to say this, a poor... Poorly made fancy dress outfit. Yeah. Mm. Well, as I said to these guys before we started recording, um, personally, I thought it looked like a really skinny dude in a um, fat suit. Well, there's <laughs> there's loads of talk, and because the person, the way they filmed it, I actually think the person's quite big. From what I've heard, the way they filmed it, it made the it made Uncle Howdy look small. This is mm. what is being okay. said. With the camera angle, mm. that was why the Alexa Bliss theory came in yeah. because everybody thought that the guy was about five foot. I th- generally thought he was a dwarf. Yeah, I thought he looked about three and a half, four foot. Because they were like, "Hang on a minute, this person's tiny." I, f- it's the camera angle, mm. right? Because I don't think he is that small. I think it's the way that it looked. I don't know who's under there. I, I've got no idea. No. I mean, the, the favourite's bow, but... I just hope it pays off. I hope we can wait another three months. I, I hope it's there. Vincent under there. I'd love for it to be Vincent. I really That's would. who I hope's under there. I just want it to pay off. I I'm want this to that, work. I'm worried that it's gone too long now. And it's also becoming up. very confusing. It's not mm. something you can easily follow anymore. Like, he doesn't have to go... And this is Triple H said this. I, I, I've said yep. this back on a podcast. He yep. doesn't have to go in all these different directions yeah. and make it so. It's okay f- to make something intriguing, mm. but if you make it so, everyone's going, "What the fuck?" Like that, people will literally go, "What the fuck?" and move on. Which is ironic because it's now happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is what they'll do because they'll mm. have enough. We said about. Keep saying chapter one every time in the ring. He comes down at least for four weeks and done the same promo. Is that the same, yeah. Nothing new. With exactly the same repercussions from the promo, which was just a vignette of someone keep yeah. coming up. And you can't keep doing that. You've got a, that's not a slow burn. That's because you're what you're doing is you're doing the same thing over and over again. It's not a house show. No. Yeah. You know, I'm concerned of the matches, but the Royal Rumble, which has been rumoured, um, a pitch black match, which there's not really any details regarding it, but that sounds like something from DDT. <laughs> it just it doesn't sound. I think it's going to. Involve, what is that? I, I don't know. I think it's going to involve darkness and just walking what, from around. Lowest off. <laughs> Bring it on! <laughs> yeah, but you put bow, that in, you put that in, bow, bow. <laughs> you put that into fucking context, <laughs> right? They're gonna put <laughs> they're, they're gonna put a fucking match on that's gonna be pitch black for us to watch on pay, uh, yeah. pay per view. Right, brilliant! I can. Do you know what? I'm just gonna close my eyes. I can see it all now. <laughs> And oh, no, I, wait! I can't. I'll tell you what it's gonna be. You're not gonna be able to see LA Knight. You're gonna be able to see that mask. Yeah, it'll that's be what they're gonna like do. That. Yeah. Do you know what? If that is the route they'll go down, do you know what I can see happening? It will go dark, I and there'll be six, was, and just, there'll be six masks. I hope so. I hope. I hope if we're going to get some shit like that, we're going to get a reveal. Do you know like what? That. I'm going right. Yeah, right. Here you go. You've heard it here first. If that genuinely is what happens, <laughs> even all six of them haven't got to take the mask off. Maybe just one of them. Do you know what? Off. At this point, at this point, if I was them and I advise them, I'd say yes. All six of you mm. take your masks off, yeah. because now let, let it's almost like let's put it on full throttle and known. go. Yeah, yeah. Because instead of this, we'll give you a little tiny crumb, but it don't make any sense. Yeah. Give us a fucking yeah. steak. <laughs> Just it's got to a point now where they've done it too much for a slow burn. It's yeah. the repetitiveness. Yeah. It's just dragging. There's only out. start. There's only so many starters you can keep having in before you want your fucking main course. Bring it on. Why not in some of those vignettes that he's been doing? Why not have that character in the background all lit up? Mm. Yeah. So you know it's not him. Straight away. 
then you can then you get the the internet speculating. Yeah. yeah. Who is this guy? Who is he? Like that. Yeah. Instead, just you have Bray just give coming us out. Something, man. Instead, you have Bray coming out playing a nice guy, and then suddenly acting a little bit funny with people, and you were like, "Well, we know he's going to turn mm. and be a bit nasty at yeah. certain times. We don't need it every week. Start showing stuff. It sounds silly because I say I like a slow burn, but this is not a slow burn. It's repetition. No, it's, yeah. this is. It's repetition. It's the. I don't know if they're stalling, guys. I don't know if you feel this. Are they stolen because Bray isn't fit? I don't know. Because there's been no talk of anything in the ring, and the, the first physicality within a ring was done this week. Yeah. Is is he not fit? He was away for a long time. Is he injured? Yeah. Tell it's not. No, maybe, it's not. Maybe the leash is on too tight. Also, there's the question of when he first... This is what I'm saying, where it's confusing to me, because I'm watching something. And I'm really watching it, similar to when we mm. were doing the White Rabbit thing, right? Can someone tell me why he had the mask on in the first place? Because mm. when we first saw him, he come out in the mask. Oh, Do you yeah. remember? Yeah. Yeah. So why has he got the mask on? You know the first bit that we yeah. say yeah. fucks yeah, up? That's he right. pulls the mask off yeah. and goes, so like, I'm back and blows I'm the here. thing out. Yeah, I'm here. But now we've got like... A new set of masks mm. and stuff like that. So why did he have the mask on? Yeah, Are we making it? it up as we go along? <sighs> Only time will tell. Because yeah. I haven't worked that out yet. I don't know about you no, guys. No, believe me, I've tried, you know. And I thought, I, I, this is going to sound really harsh, I thought he's a lot cleverer than this. I, yeah. Do you know what? I still do think he is. So do I. I think there's... Maybe I genuinely think that there's powers that be that are kind of going, no, not yet. I'm not sure. But I hope I'm wrong. I'm not sure. I think that they might be telling him to speed it along now. Yeah. We'll that come we'll across see. this week like a speed up, like a, we've got to get somewhere now. Like it was rushed. We'll see what happens this week then. Yeah. I think that's what they wanted to do. I think the problem is is that Uncle Howdy looks very good under lights. Mm. Yeah, when you put person. green lights well, and blue it's not, lights It's not even people. that. It looks great close up. Mm. Like there, you know, a shot of the eyes and then a shot of the mouth. But in the studio, you can light it up. Yeah, yeah that's it. And you can make it it's look sinister. That's what you've got editing for when yeah. you do a video. But when he come out live, <laughs> looked horrendous. It's First it? of all, the leather jacket weren't even brown. Nope. Because it's a sandy leather jacket that he's wearing on TV. Mm. That was a black jacket. So the, that got me. I know it's a small thing, but I thought but still, he doesn't you don't even look cowboy. Con- yes, continuity. You know, that's all it is. Just continuity. But I don't know. I don't know. It's a shame. Let's hope for the best. Let's oh, hope, mate. For I, best, yes. I really do. Besides, has, has anyone else got any other news? Um, I haven't. I'm afraid because no. I look at I look at rests in a bit like. At Christmas time, you know, and there's not a lot going on no, in the rest of the world. Well, oh, we've got John Cena. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's coming back next he's week. one match this year. Yep. Who's that against? Theory? Uh, nope. Him and Kevin Owens versus, versus Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. Zayn. So, is, is, are we saying now that Owens is shooing for the Royal Rumble? Well, I don't is know. that going to be the match with Reigns? Well, the story behind this match is Kevin Owens needed the partner. So he texts his good friend John Cena and said, you haven't had, this is the first time in your whole career that you haven't had a match in a year. Every year since you debuted, you've had He texts his good friend, good friend John oh, yeah. Cena. Yes. Yeah. What, the person let's who he not, debuted? Let's not <laughs> even go into that. And um, John Cena said, that we'll, we'll run that zero of- sense. <laughs> yeah. John Cena said, we're running out of time. This can't happen, so I need to have a match this year to carry on the streak mm. of having a match every year since he debuted. And he agreed to it, and on the SmackDown... On the, the last final SmackDown, Smackdown yeah. of 2022. It's a tag team match. Yep. John Cena and his good friend Kevin Owens. So is Cena going to declare for the Rumble or something? What's going on? No, I think it's, it's just it's, a match. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's a hype thing, isn't it? What's the point? John Cena, big no. Builds up the rumble, for yeah. fuck's sake. Mm. 
Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. the John Cena moves. Um, I, I, I just want to say one thing before we actually do finish our first year of this podcast. Um, thanks, guys. It's all right. Thanks a lot. This um, to both of you and everyone that's listening. Um, I fucking love doing this. Yeah, good. It's, yeah. you know, it, it has... I'm not going to lie. I'm going to do a bit of a personal thing here. It's been a shit year for me. It really has been a shit year. There's been a lot of things that have happened in, you know, life and personal stuff um, to my family as well That's that's really been shit. Um, but doing this podcast has put a massive upside in what has been a, quite a fucking turbulent and traumatic year. Um, and knowing that I've got two mates that I do this podcast with and the support that you two have shown me over this last year has meant a hell of a lot. Um, so I really, really can't thank you guys enough for that. And, um, yeah, cheers, guys. It's all right. It's all right. That's all Thanks. right, because yeah. we're always going to be here mm. for you. And this, this goes on live on, on the podcast, mm. but we mean this. We're your mates first and foremost yeah. before this podcast anyway. Yeah, yeah. So we're always going to be here for you. So you Anytime. Yeah. yeah. Cheers, guys. Absolutely. And one last thing I just wanted to add on this. Um, um, I, I, you know, it's, it's been brilliant. I really, I fucking love doing this show with you two. It just really does put such a smile on my face doing this. It's such good fun. Um, I just want, for me personally, I just wanted to, you know, for my last words to be um i'd like to dedicate this last show of 2022 to uh mark dobson um you are going to be sorely missed my good friend um and already are 